inspire my imagination. I'm looking for a place that will open new horizons for me. I want a place that will fuel me and put me on the track to the career of my dreams. A place that will spark my curiosity and satisfy my hunger for ideas. A place that will challenge me to the fullest, that will guide me and that will inspire me. I want to be around people who will support me, appreciate me for who I am and embrace me as I start my journey. I want a place that will give me the tools that I need to succeed in the career that I choose. I'm going to college at a place that will prepare me to win. I'm ready to make a difference. I know what I want. I know where I'm going. I'm ready to launch the me that I can be. And I am West. This is the University of West Georgia. Back at it here on University or uh, UWG Productions. I'll get it right eventually. So great to have everybody with us and also streaming live on uh, KISS 102.7, UWGathletics.com. It's a great night for football, Ben, and West Alabama won the toss. We will get the football to start and back deep to receive LP and Wesley Kennedy uh, kicking off for West Alabama. They're Place kicker of the six or the five foot seven senior Kevin Butchers, wearing number eighteen. West Alabama red helmets, red pants, white jerseys, red lettering. West Georgia in the classic red, white, and blue. Love it. Yeah, man, they look really crispy today. So let's, <laughs> <laughs> great day for some football, man. So let's do it. Let's get going. It is end over end kick, and Butchers will put it about seven yards deep in the back of the end zone for a touchback. And that's where we'll see the West Georgia offense led by redshirt freshman quarterback Cam Brown, who provided the spark for us. Obviously, Ben Whitlock played the entire game pretty much, uh, game one in the win over Limestone. And then Cam came and started uh, the, or the week two game, or came in uh, on the road against Texas A&M Kingsville, and it's been pretty much his team ever since. Yeah, man, Cam, for a young quarterback, he has looked really poised and confident um, in that pocket. And that's what we're going to look like, look to see him do today against his good West Alabama defense. Well, we'll see what we do here on this very first possession as we go two receivers to each side. You've got Cam sending Javen West in motion to the right side. Now trips to the right, one receiver to the left. We get away with a false start there. Kennedy going to get the carry, and he's brought down immediately after a gain of about three by their linebacker. Number uh, five, I believe, it was Jamarcus Smith in there for the stop. And also it looked like number uh, seven as yeah. well, uh, Trevin uh, Stanford. Yeah, Trevin, yeah. They look like they're in a 4-2-5 look, similar to what we run on defense, Ben. After a gain of three, it's second and seven. Trey Williams comes in motion and sets up on the left side. Two receivers now. Cam going to throw, and Cam got it out to LP. He caught it at the at the 35, but had to come back and re, uh, hold on to it to the 34. And he's going to be about a yard short, a gain of four, and it's third down and one. Yeah, man, that was a great job by LP meeting the ball because it was thrown a little short, but he was he came back and met the ball. That was a good job by LP. Third and one. A minute has rolled off on a first quarter clock. Two tight set, one to each side. Running back is Wesley Kennedy. We'll hand it to him. He'll get the first down across the 35 up to the 37 for the Wolves. Yeah, man, that's going to be our bread and butter today, just getting that run game going for sure. Good job, by, especially the O-line looking pretty good right now so going so far on this first drive. Brought down by Artavius Washington. Stepped up and made a tackle. And they need to update. Uh, from what I'm looking at, that we were talking to their, some of their radio folks, they did not have a 
uh, the best of travel roster, but we got what we have, and that was Artavius Washington. Cam Brown going to throw on first down to LP, who made a man miss, and then got tackled by the next two guys across the 40 to the 41-yard line, pick up a four, second and uh, second and about five now, actually. A long, it's going to be a long, uh, long five. Man, he's getting closer and closer already. <laughs> 13.04 and counting. Almost two minutes have flown by here. Two receivers to the right, one receiver left. They go tight end right with Trey Williams. Kennedy going to flip-flop from left to right side. Cam looking all the way to the left side, and he completes it out to Michael Tubbs. Tubbs hasn't got a lot of playing time this year, but he steps up right there, makes a grab across midfield to the 48-yard line, and the transfer out of uh, or transferred in last year and is – Made his, I believe, first catch of the season. Yeah, I think that actually was his first catch of the season. But we just saw a little quick game right there. Could get, uh, the O-line definitely got, got some good chops and good cut blocks in, get the hands down. Trips out here to the left, one to the right. T. Cole up top with Wesley Kennedy beside Cam Brown. Snap, they'll toss it out to Kennedy. He's across the 45. Kennedy across the 40. Made a man get off of him real quick. That was Artavius Washington, who kind of ran him out of bounds, but technically he ran him over. Yeah, he definitely <laughs> did. That's what he looked like. And Ken, Wesley Kennedy's not a big guy, but he definitely brought some, brought some power then. 12-10 to go here in quarter number two. Two receivers to the right. There are actually three receivers right. LP in the slot, T. Cole in the middle. And Tubbs up top, right. Trey Williams in the fullback, H-backs position for us on the right side, and Kennedy out to the left. Brown gonna throw a wheel round Ooh. out of the backfield, wide open to Kennedy. 20, 15, 10, five, touchdown West Georgia. Nobody went with the wheel route there, Ben. Yeah, nobody. He was he was open for, as soon as he left the backfield, man. That was a great job and great ball by Cam Brown, man. That was a great opening drive for the Wolves. You couldn't have asked for a better drive for West Georgia. Man, Ooh. rocking and rolling here on drive number one. West Georgia marches down the field. And we'll get the exact, uh, obviously went 75 yards. Yeah. But Brock Pellegrino will add on the extra point. Reed Reagan will snap it, and Pate Hogan will hold it. Kick is up. It looks good because it is good. We got some scrums going on now. Helmet comes off. Everybody going back to their respective sides. A seven play, 75 yard drive. Wolves lead seven nothing here on UWG Productions. the Kappa Alpha Order. The one and only all review. How has your experience been at uh, Battle of the Hall so far? It's been good, very loud, love the spirit. Listen, the energy is high and it is crazy out here. So if you haven't been, you gotta make sure you come. It's been good, we just won that last game. Oh my gosh, it was so crazy. All right, and what event were you guys just doing just now? So we just did a tug of war. Yeah. yeah, it got a little heated and they were pulling and then the rope just snapped. It was it was crazy. Can you show us the evidence right there? Yeah, that's all. <laughs> <clears throat> this is half of the rope. You know, it was a lot of alpha male energy over there. Um, we didn't expect that. We were just running it back, but you know, we just too strong. We live. Welcome to the pack. 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 
Seven play, 75 yard drive, uh, the Wolves lead. And there's coach David Dean winning his coach in school history. He passed, passed his good friend and one of his mentors, Charlie Fisher, for most wins in UWG history back a couple weeks ago. And always good to see coach Dean down on the sidelines. And speaking of sidelines, we'll check in with our good friend, Cade Perry in here in just a moment and Carly down on the sideline. And, We'll hear from him after this kickoff as he, as uh, Davalos, Tyler Davalos will kick it into the strong headwind and they'll take it from the 15 yard line and get up to just the 25 yard line as Keandre Williams makes the stop. Let's go down to the third and fourth members of our crew in the UWG Productions and Cade Perry and Carly Pear. Strong headwind was right there, Matthew. <laughs> I think that ball started to go backwards before the West Alabama uh, receiver got it. He is down right now, but I'll tell you what, West Alabama, West Georgia, it seems like every time West Alabama comes to Carrollton, they've got a chip on their shoulder. I can tell today they've got that chip. So it's going to be a good ball game, two quality programs, two quality coaches, both of them the winningest coaches in their program histories. West Alabama, West Georgia, here we are yet again. Thank you, Cade. We'll be coming down to him periodically tonight, and, man, hate to see this. Uh, Darius Nelson uh, is down and got a couple of folks looking at him. He was the man who returned it 10 yards from the 15 up to the 25-yard line, and looks like that um, they're going to help him up. It's a media timeout and it looks like we're going to take a media timeout with it as they take them off to the sideline right here on UWG Productions. We'll be back right after this. your father. Kevin. 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 Trusted advice for life. Kevin, how's your mom? Thank you. Life well planned. See what a Raymond James financial advisor can do for you. at it as they were able to get Darius Nelson off the field. Hope that young man's okay. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. West Al will start with their first possession of the game. Arsenault going to look, going to pass, and going to complete out to the right to senior Darius Nalls, his first completion of the ball game. And Arsenault completes it for a six-yard gain, and it's second and four, Ben. Yeah, man. We good. Today's defense won't make them uh, do better than we did last week. Uh, yeah. Two weeks ago, definitely for sure, because we got throwing deep ball a lot two weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, a lot of deep balls uh, two weeks ago for West Florida. They were very successful with the intermediate passing game, and then when they went over the top, they were also successful. Here's a deep ball into the wind, and this one's going to kind of push out of bounds. It's going to be very tough to throw that deep ball, though, today due to the fact of this wind. 
blowing very hard. Look at old Glory to our left, blowing pretty hard. I mean, it's going to be tough, those balls getting up in the air like that to, uh, to try to track it yeah. and get underneath it. Yeah, I think the only guys that like win on the games like this are the big guys. Yeah. So the guys in the trenches love these kind of games. Keep you a little cooler. Yeah, definitely, most definitely. <laughs> Two receivers to the left, one to the right. H back to the left, or I guess that's a big tight end slash wide receiver who's kind of lined up there. Xavier Robinson going to come on a Mike Blitz. He gets off of it and hits Arsenault as he throws, and Jet or Kamine Fagans throws out of bounds. Number nine, uh, or that's number seven, Walker, the catch, and I think it's good enough for a first down. No, he's going to be a yard short at the 34. And he's going to have to punt it away. How about that for the Wolves? Getting off the field on third down. Yeah, man, that's a great that's a great feeling for this team, Get, getting the score on the first drive and getting the three and out on the first drive for the defense. I thought that Tyler Walker thought that he had the first down because he didn't even try to put yeah. the ball out to stretch it. And here comes Trey Sullivan on to punt it away. Low snap, and Steven Peterson got back there pretty quick, and here's a high – uh, spiral kick that's going to take a West Georgia hop from the 33 back across the 35 to the 36-yard line, and that's where the Wolves will set up shop first and 10. Great field position starting off right now on this drive, too. So the two side judges have it at the 36, but they have it at the 35. All right. And we'll take a look now at our series history between these two squads. Last time we met with West Al, we got the win on the road. I was at the house with my newborn child, so I didn't get to go to that game. 22-7 to on the road. We had a pick six in that game, and West Georgia leads the all-time series 23-16. to This is the 40th time these two programs have played, so a lot of history between the two. Yeah, a lot of history and a lot of bad blood, but a lot of great matchups as well. Cam Brown looking to throw and just has to get rid of it. Rolled to his left. They faked it to Rajay's Mosley, and we had two tight in there on the on the play and had to throw it away as Mays will come out of the ball, or that Zach Obi has to come out of the ball game as Jersey got messed up there. And then we'll go trips to the left, one receiver right, umpire saying something to, and that's the center judge telling something to Cam. So Rajay's Mosley in the ball game beside Cam Brown, trips to the left, one to the right. Here comes a pressure off the outside, and they'll throw it out here to Rajay's Mosley, and he caught it Ooh. and somehow broke a tackle and fell forward to the 39-yard line. Who was that? Their number eight for them, Uriah Ratliff. Yeah. West Al's corner came up and hit Rajay's Mosley behind the line of scrimmage, and we make the grab, but Rajay's just – Oh, man, he's like a hit in a brick wall, and he fell forward to the 38-yard line. Big third down, Ben. Yeah, man, most plays, you see the corner make a big tackle on that, but that just shows you how strong and how – just just really just how strong how Rajay's Mosley is. They show pressure. Still five guys probably coming here for West Al. Two receivers each side. Shotgun formation. Third and seven. 9.50 on the first quarter clock. They'll bring extra pressure. Good pickup by Rajay's Mosley. Cam Brown going to run. And oh, Cam Ooh. slid down. We want a flag. Cam, Cam a couple of weeks ago does not slide because of the shoulder injury, but now he slides, and he's going to be about two yards short. Man. Yeah, Cam two weeks ago would have definitely kept running. but I He's mean, been told not, yeah. to, uh, not to do so. Almost was a flag for a late hit there, but won't get the call as – I don't think he made unnecessary he contact. Didn't. He was close, though, but he didn't. Riley Mason will punt it away. Good snap by Reed Reagan. He'll have all day to punt it. He'll keep it low, and that ball will hit and take a West Alabama bounce. Not going to do much punting uh, from south end to the north end today. And we're going to turn the ball back or give the ball right back over to West Alabama and uh, they're going to come to us Ben and okay. so far give us your thoughts 7 nothing here in the early part West Georgia with a great first drive got a stop on defense and just had to give it right back to West Al man you, you honestly couldn't ask for a better start for West Georgia it's, it's, except for that drive just then but honestly we came out we scored a touchdown we got a three and out the team is looking really good in confidence we put that game behind us from the last loss we got. So let's, let's keep this going. Let's keep this momentum going. We we'll definitely will do that. Two receivers to the left, one receiver right. They got a tight end to the right. Looks like, uh, I think it's 24. Uh, it's not 24. 
Might be 21. Aiden at or uh, likes Tyler Smith, I believe. They'll hand it off, and Keandre Williams Ooh. came in from his stud position and made the stop on the back side. A loss of two. Keandre Williams from the outside. Actually, he plays the Ram position. The 6'2", 214-pound junior from Metter, Georgia. Yeah, man, Keandre came fast. Look, oh, he came off the backside of the play. That was a great play by Keandre, man. That was an amazing play. Great job. One of the toughest plays to make in football on the backside, and he did it right then and there. Here they go. Arsenal going to throw, or Arsenal going to throw, and they couldn't hold on to it incomplete, and it'll be third down. Our guys are coming <laughs> like a machine yes. gun off the edges. They're beating the West Alabama tackles head over heels yes, every play. Yes. And that's what we love to see, man. They're just playing just full with full steam, man. On defense, you don't want them to think you want them to react. And now we bring in our pass rush specialists, Brian Rice and uh, Festus Davies. Ooh, that's a dangerous combo right <laughs> yeah. there. That's nothing but speed. Uh-oh, Festus goes out on coverage. And now Festus <laughs> is going to go cover the corner. That shows you how, 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 versatile, <laughs> how versatile he is. is. We're only brush, rush three. Arsenal all day to throw, and he'll just have to throw it away. If we're not beating them with the rush, we're beating them with the coverage in the back end. Great work yeah. by the West Georgia defense. We just sent a hybrid linebacker to cover <laughs> a receiver, and he did really good. Oh, yes, my he goodness. Did. Yes, he did indeed. I was not expecting Festus Davies to go out there and cover one of their top receivers. But a great job by the West Georgia defense. Another three and out for West Town. They'll have to punt it away again. 8-17 to go first quarter. Wesley Kennedy, the third, back deep to receive. They'll punt it away. High spiral kick. Kennedy going to call for fair catch at the 34. And that's where he'll take over. First and 10, West Georgia. And we're going to keep rolling. We've already hit our great media timeouts right here it. on Flow Sports. UWG Productions, KISS 102.7, and the UWG Sports Network. Appreciate everybody listening to us tonight, however, or watching, however you're doing so. We can't thank you enough. And we've got such a great crew around everywhere. And uh, just the tailgate atmosphere is always a great one up there at the hill tonight. They got some games up there to watch and tailgating. Nothing beats a good grill out before a football game. Nothing, man. Nothing. I got a chance to experience that for the first time in my life last <laughs> year. So it was a great atmosphere up there on the hill. Cam Brown going to throw it out to Trey Williams. A great tackle. We ran an RPO there, kept it, and then threw it out to Trey Williams and give credit to their quarterback or their uh, corner, Uriah Ratliff, came up from his defensive back position and made a great play. Yeah, he uh, redeemed himself from the last time he met somebody in the flat. So Yeah. yeah. Two receivers to the right, Keontae Skinner and Steven Peterson, two receivers down here to the left. Looks like Lockley in the game. I think that's Bridges in the slot. Kennedy. Beside Cam Brown. Brown takes the snap, looking, throws across the middle. Oh, had a diving Lockley, just couldn't make the grab. And in coverage, number 11, Ahmad Jackson. Yeah, I think the, um, the Cam Brown, we know probably took off running just then. He's looking more downfield. He's definitely listening to the coaches yeah. about that shoulder injury, definitely. And my apologies, that's the other corner. I'm sorry, uh, Demario Nichols, the other number 11. Sometimes you just hate double numbers, yeah, don't you? Just hate they have a lot of them, too. <laughs> Everybody in college football, unfortunately, has those double numbers now with so many players on the rosters and what the kids want to wear and stuff. It's yeah. third down and 11 to go. Trips to the right, one to the left. And we had the, uh, we had the wheel round out of the backfield again, and Kennedy went up with one hand but couldn't make the grab. And I think this might be a pick play on us. Yeah, good call by this back judge. It was uh, Jerry Mays set a pick, and we might could see it on replay, Ben. You got to watch this. It was a great pick and pick and roll in basketball. I mean, we we set a great pick. Wesley Kennedy just couldn't make the grab, and we'll have to punt it away. Pass interference, offense number eighty-six. The penalty is declined. Fourth down. Yeah, we didn't uh, we didn't try to hide that one very much. No, no we did. <laughs> Old Jerry. And Jerry's not a small guy, so I know he said that pick and the guy felt it. Yeah. Back deep to receive is Darius Knowles. Tyler or uh, Reed uh, Mace, uh, Riley Mason will punt it away, 
and he hits a boomer in this win. My goodness, great punt by Riley Mason. Marcus Gary was there in coverage along with Steven Peterson. Ball will be placed at the 21-yard line and 7-12 remaining here in quarter number one. And it's still 7 to nothing. West Georgia leads, keeping it right here. Definitely have to keep you up to date, guys. The Atlanta Braves are starting their, uh, their playoff push tonight. And uh, excited to keep up with them. 0-0 at the end of the first inning. So that's always a good sign. Arsenal going to throw, looking, and knocked away Ooh, by pick. Jet Lee. And I think it was picked. Oh, Jeremy Smith dove and caught it. But they're going to say it hit the ground first. Don't know if we can review that or not. Uh, we might challenge it if we get another look at it. But, man, Jer uh, Jeremy Smith dove, who had the uh, pretty much the only touchdown for us in the first three quarters of the game uh, down in uh, West Florida. Here's the pass, the throw. Tip, good defense by Jet Lee and good call. It hit good the call, ground. Yeah. He hit the ball. It, it was real quick, though. It was real quick. I thought he got it. Second and ten. Arsenal to pass again. Don't have anybody over there. Uh, but luckily, it just runs out of bounds. Jordan Clark made, uh, I guess, kind of forced him out. He ran out of bounds after a gain of seven. I believe that was number uh, six, Ben Binion. Chris Binion. Yeah, that was Chris Binion. Yeah, yeah. Chris Binion. Ooh, he's pretty tall. Yeah. <laughs> It correctly. So third and three. Let's see if West Georgia can force their third straight three and out. This is something big that Coach Masters would want, just so our defense can get our offense going. Two receivers right, one to the left. Arsenal to pass, and he's looking all the way to Walker, and Walker never looked for the ball. It looked like he was almost blocking on the play, and he threw it away, and another stop by the West Georgia defense. Yeah, it was definitely some miscommunication there by, by Walker and his I mean, um, and the quarterback. So I don't know if they got a wrong play or he was just thinking something, but he was definitely blocking. Number 12, Wesley Kennedy. So fourth down, two to go, ball on the 29-yard line. Kennedy back deep to return. Snap handled, almost blocked it, and we roughed the kicker. We roughed the kicker, and they're going to get a first down. So we'll give them another opportunity. I'm, the one thing I'm glad about is their their punter did not. Uh, their punter number 92, Trey Sullivan, he didn't try to act about it. He yeah. got right back up. I appreciate that out of. Kind of specialist. Especially he actually got hit too, because all specials I talked just to lay on the ground, but it was so obvious. Running into the kicker. 28 of the return team. Five yard penalty five yard reserves and a full down. First down for West Howe after running into the kicker. Almost could have called, you know, roughing, but we'll take the running and it'll be five yards instead. So we'll see what our defense can do. Trey Douglas in there, defensive back for us. We got uh, Jet Lee in there, Jordan Clark in there. And that's Jalen Brown making his debut today. Yeah. Arsenal to the pass, looking, and oh, Jet Lee was over there. It's a no fly zone around Jet Lee as that ball was intended for Darius Nows. <laughs> there you see Jet. <laughs> if you guys got to know Jet Lee, oh my goodness, he is he is a true character and an amazing person. Just look at him. He's just all over the place. I love Jet Lee, man. He's a lot of fun. Amos Don in there. We also see uh, Micah Thurman in there at the north side of Warner Robins High School. Met his family out in Texas, man. What a great guy. Yeah. What a great family. Bringing a man in motion, two receivers right, one to the left. They'll throw across the middle. Ooh. Almost intercepted again. Jet Lee was there again. <laughs> Why does he keep trying, Jet Lee? <laughs> he's testing them today. Because Darius Knowles is their go-to receiver. Yeah. And he's doing he's doing a great job today. Look at him. Yeah. <laughs> Love it, Jet Lee. <laughs> and he's that way all the time. All the Practice, time, weights. Getting on and off the bus. Yeah, you need somebody like that on your <laughs> team. He, no matter the energy, he's going to bring the same thing every day. Third and ten. That ball complete. 
at the 30-yard line to the 35 and almost broke another tackle. Luckily, we're able to stop him. That was Jet Lee there, and it's going to be fourth down. Uh, as that was Bri Webb, their running back out of the backfield. So another stop for the West Georgia defense, fourth and two. And they'll have to punt it away. Here's the UWG production system replay as Jeremy Smith couldn't make it, and Jet Lee got just a yeah, just, just a pinky, just a pinky on him to, to bring him down. So credit Jet Lee with pretty much every play on that drive. Yeah, man, hey, <laughs> Jet, that that was all Jalen Lee that drive. Here's the punt. Wesley Kennedy will call for fair catch. We do not rough, and we will take over at the 24-yard line with 5:14 to go here in the fourth quarter, or with the first quarter. The fourth I'm, trying, quarter? I'm trying to skip his head to the fourth already. I don't know why. Can't be ready to go yet, man. No, I'm definitely not. Definitely not. It's been a fun game so far. Love to keep it that way. Receiver to each side for West Georgia. We go two tight, Rajes Mosley. In it, running back. Well, last two Wolves drives have stalled after we went seven plays, 75 yards on drive number one. We'll throw the slant to Lockley. Got an 11-yard gain and a first down across the 35 to the 36-yard line. That's what we want to see. First play, first down. Let's keep you rolling, Wolves. T.J. Lockley. Very nicely done. Now we'll go trips to the right. T. Cole, Steven Peterson, and Xavier Robinson. We'll go a tight end left. Looks like Zach Obie. And Cam Brown beside Rajay's Mosley. Four down lineman. They sneak an extra defensive back up near the line. Brown going to throw. It's tipped at the line by, look like number 54, Ben, Stephen White. Yeah, that was number 54, Stephen White. He got his hands up pretty quick, and he got pressure on the quarterback and just threw his hands up. We were looking to go to Stephen Peterson, and he was open, just got deflected at the line of scrimmage. At the whole 36-yard line. Looks like we got Jalen Moore in the ball game for Marvin James, too. Yeah, I just was about to say any changes on the offensive line that you've noticed yet. But trips to the right, one to the left, second and ten. Brown going to pitch it out to Rajay's Mosley. He's across the 40, runs over a man or at the 40 and gets to the 41-yard line. He runs with a vengeance, and look at number five. He is holding his shoulder. He needs to come out of the ball game. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Oh my goodness. He's going to stay in, but he is laboring at that left shoulder. Hope he's okay. It should be okay. I think he just got a little stinger, but that's what happens when you meet Roger Posley. <laughs> Jamarcus Smith, give him credit for uh, getting tackled by Roger Mosley. Marquise Bridges out to the far right. Trips to the left. Roger's beside Cam Brown. Third down and five to go. We bring Lockley in motion. 3.50 to go on a first quarter clock. Brown, four-step drop. Going to throw the flag around and overthrew it, and it's incomplete, almost intercepted. Looked for T. Cole, but there is a flag. Could we have offsides here? I think we got offsides on this defensive man. Uh, I can get his number. I can't see it right now. I think that's number 54 they got off offsides on. Got you. Okay. Illegal formation. Yeah. On the offense. <laughs> More than four in the backfield. Fif so a decline. legal formation. Fourth down. Illegal formation on the Wolves. And it'll be fourth and five now. So we won't get the offsides, but we will get the illegal formation call. And it will be Riley Mason on to punt it. Reed Reagan to snap it. Back deep is Darius Nalls. Snap gets there, and they had a guy beat it back there, but he just took a bad angle. Nalls called it at the 22, had some room, and just tripped down up to the 25-yard line. So with 3.37 to go in the first quarter, West Georgia now will come back out on defense and where they've been very solid tonight. Yeah, on today on the defense has been really solid. Nothing but three and outs all day, really. Except that one running to, running to the kicker. Yeah, besides the running into the kicker, they have not done a whole lot. So first and ten for West Al at the 26-yard line. 
337 to go, first quarter. Two receivers right, one to the left. They have a tight end playing H-back, basically. That's their backup running back because they're down two tight ends this week. And Xavier Robinson brings down Bri Webb from behind right at the line of scrimmage. And guess who else? Malcolm Mercer, Malcolm, your good, your Malcolm good friend Mercer. Malcolm. <laughs> there is a flag on the play. He came in late too, so I don't know what the flag could have been. I hope not a face mask. The umpire threw it, so it's got to be a chop block or a face mask. Probably a face mask. Personal foul. Personal foul. Face mask. Yeah. Defense number 56. 15-yard penalty is added to the end of the run. <laughs> Automatic first down. And Malcolm said he didn't grab nobody's face mask. Maybe we could see on the UWG Productions incident replay if he did or not, but nonetheless, Malcolm's going to get ready to play the next down. First and 10. Two receivers left, one to the right. H back left as well. Throwing it out to Arsenal. Complete to a receiver out there, number seven, Walker. Across the 45-yard line, brought down by a couple of Wolves. Ben Fortson, one of those Wolves. Combined Fagans out there as well. Gain of about four. Second and six. At the 2.55 and counting here in quarter number one. Rocking and rolling on through here. Two same formation as they'll point out a couple of changes. Now Coach Masters will change some, uh, change the play call up. Let's go. Snap. They'll hand to Bry Mitch or Bry at the uh, line of scrimmage. He gets stopped by Jalen Tarver. Maybe a gain of one. Bry Webb the carry. Gain of one, it will be third and five. Wolves have another chance to get off the field here, Ben. Yeah, man, let's, let's go ahead and get it going, Wolves. That was a great play by Jalen Tarver. He met him in the hole right there. The senior from AC Flora High School, Jalen Tarver in Columbia, South Carolina. Third down. West Al has not had a lot of success on third down. We'd like to keep it that way. With trips to the right, one receiver out to the left, 150 to go. Good get off by Dimitri, it's Lofton. Arsenal will get rid of it across the middle and it's incomplete. A little bit better throw and it might have been completed, but Dimitri is Lofton, the get off that he had right there, Ben, the explosiveness off the left edge position. You know he's playing with a chip, being the former University of West Al player himself. Yeah. Um, Look at this get off. Oh my goodness, Ooh. oh, they didn't, they didn't show the yeah, first well, part. The, well. He truly just ran straight through that right tackle. <laughs> That's a bad feeling as an offensive lineman, yeah, isn't it? it? You've is. been there and done that before. Not many you, times, though. No, not many times. <laughs> no, no, no. But definitely, especially those in my first couple of years, definitely have been there before. It happens to us. Snap and punt it away to Wesley Kennedy. Kennedy caught it and will go down pretty much immediately at the 15-yard line as Kyrie G made the stop. Nice play by him at the 16-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for the Wolves right there. Cam, we'll see Cam Brown in this West Georgia Wolves offense once again. Really haven't done a whole lot since that first drive, Ben. Just 13 plays, 82 yards. Um, well, I might have to uh, refresh it. No, it still says, uh, well, yeah, the, I was about to say the live stats are a little bit behind, I was about to say. <laughs> There's you see Coach Dean. We'll go down to Cade Perry with his thoughts so far on a pretty back and forth first quarter after this play. Two receivers to each side, bringing Javen West in motion. Kennedy in at running back. We'll hand it to him left side. He makes a man miss in the backfield and gets a hard one yard on the play to the 17, maybe the 18. Cade, what you got for us down there? You know, it's military and first responders day here at University of West Georgia. Carly. It was pretty cool pregame, wasn't it? Oh, it was so cool. We had a helicopter drop our game ball in the middle of our field. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, Carly and I basically guided the helicopter in, <laughs> told it where to land. We it did. was it was pretty amazing, guys. Awesome. It was so cool. Awesome, awesome. It was a very cool experience, and you got to see that into the introduction as we handed off to Wesley Kennedy to the maybe the twenty yard line. So again, a, a, another two yards, and it will be third down. 
and six to go. We'll see Cam Brown possibly airing out right here. Yeah, and we just haven't been running the ball some good since that first drive, honestly, Matt. But um, hopefully we can get it going and get this first down right here. Marvin James back in there, ain't he? Left guard. Yeah, big Marvin yeah. back in there, yeah. Got <clears throat> Trips out to the right, one to the left. Third and six, Brown looking, looking. Going to roll to his right and throw a pick. Threw it right to him, tried to force it in, and got hit as he threw, and it was picked off by number eight, Uriah Ratliff. Man, tough play right there. Yeah, as a quarterback, you know, sometimes you might just want to go down, but Cam Brown still, that's something he has to learn. Yeah, T. Cole was right there. He was open a little earlier, but Cam was unable to get it to him, and Threw it to him just a little too late. So it will be first and 10, West Alabama inside the 25 to the 23 yard line. And now the defense will have to face their first adversity of the ball game today. They'll hand it off and no oh, run a reverse to Nows. We somewhat play it pretty well as he only got a couple of yards. Good job by uh, number 29. Uh, Trey Douglas from the safety position came up and helped us out big time right there. He was not fooled by the reverse at all. That's the end of the first quarter. And that's the end of the first quarter, Ben. We'll take a timeout and be right back here on UWG Productions with the Wolves leading 7-0. Hello, my name is Kai Morgan. I'm here with UWG Productions, and we're going to show you our production setup for football because we have a broadcast in a couple of hours. Here we have our Sony 4K camera on the roof. This is one of our camera setups, and over here is our PTZ cam brought into the control room over the University Enterprise Network to give us NDI video. And now I'm going to send it to Shamaya in the operation room. Hey y'all, my name is Shamaya. I'm here in the operations room. Here we have a in-house audio where we pretty much control all of our music for the stream and in-house. We have our PA announcer here as well. We also house another camera in this area and we're also engineered to where we can talk back to the control room at any time. Now I'm gonna throw to Kai in our TV booth. A big part of a broadcast is communication. Currently, I'm in our play-by-play -play booth where our play-by-play -play and color analysts can see the field beautifully from the 50-yard line. And we have these talkback boxes where they can talk back directly to the control room to keep that communication flowing. Additionally, we have our Ada cams and GBM light kits so we can have a personal view of the talent and to keep our image balanced. And now, I'm gonna throw it to Shamaya on the AOB porch. Hey y'all, so now I'm at the Athletic Operations Building where we house our end zone camera angle. And what's cool about this camera angle is we also get a lot of our replay shots from this angle and we also have a great view of our home sideline. Now I'm gonna throw it back to Kai at our low end zone camera position. Hello everyone, here I am at our low angle camera position. Now this position is crucial because it shows whether someone scored or not at the goal line. And now I'm gonna throw it to Shamaya over on the opposite side of the field. Hey y'all, so now I'm down on the field with our wireless cam. We use Hollyland technology, our transmitter and receiver, to get pretty much anywhere on the field. We also have a boom mic attached to a pole for our net sound for our broadcast. Here we are in the control room where we have all of our camera's feeds coming in successfully. If you want to tune in to any of our broadcasts throughout the year, you can find us online at UWG Productions YouTube page. Bye! <laughs> Welcome to the pack. 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 Back at it is there you see Brett Gillian in his is the coach at uh, West Al is one of their winning, or the winningest coach in West Alabama history. 58 wins, 58 and 39 overall as West Al will take it. And down he goes. Great down he goes. The, the defensive back once again. Guess who? Trey Douglas came in and made a big play. Trey Douglas came to, came to play today. I and, love it. And it's third down and long. <laughs> Yeah. 
third and third down. Yeah, not second down, it's third down. Third down, 13 to go. Two receivers to the right, one receiver out to the left. Two uh, running backs now beside Arsenault. Arsenault drops back, rolling now to his right, has a man open, called it at the 25 to the 21-yard line, and there's Jet Lee who made a great stop for the, Wol or for the Wolves. Uh, Hunter Kilpatrick made the catch out of the backfield, and that will bring out the field goal kicker. He'll have to kick it into the wind here. This will be a tough field goal. This is number 60, Elijah Guyton, who is warming up. He's listed as their backup punter. But he's going to be the one that makes the long field goals. We'll see how he does today. Well, it'll be a 38-yard attempt, almost, I guess, a 39-yard attempt. From the right hash, snap, up, kick is up. It looks good because it is good. Great kick by Elijah Guyton. And it's seven to three, and we are going to take a media timeout. 13.27 to go on UWG Productions. Wolves lead the Tigers seven to three. Back after this. I'm not looking for a college to help me find myself. I'm looking for a college to help me be myself. A place to ignite my passion and fire my imagination. I'm looking for a place that will open new horizons for me. I want a place that will fuel me and put me on the track to the career of my dreams. A place that will spark my curiosity and satisfy my hunger for ideas. A place that will challenge me to the fullest, that will guide me and that will inspire me. I want to be around people who will support me, appreciate me for who I am and embrace me as I start my journey. I want a place that will give me the tools that I need to succeed in the career that I choose. I'm going to college at a place that will prepare me to win. I'm ready to make a difference. I know what I want. I know where I'm going. I'm ready to launch the me that I can be. And I am West. This is the University of West Georgia. Welcome back in, UWG Productions. A 39-yard field goal by Elijah Guyton has it now at 7-3. West Alabama trailing West Georgia. LP back deep to receive along with Wesley Kennedy. And kicking it off is Kevin Butchers. What a great name, Kevin Butchers. A great name? Yeah. Yeah, you can say that. <laughs> Kevin Butchers, we can go with that today. We'll take a look at some scores from around the league. Still 0-0 in the Braves game, bottom of the third, and this ball might be going out of bounds. No, it checks up at the seven, and Wesley Kennedy will return it to the 15. Kennedy, 20, 25, 30. Kennedy outside, 35, 40. Kennedy, can he get the corner? He, he gets to midfield oh. to the 45 and maybe to the 40-yard line. First down, West Georgia. They'll put it at the 38. What a great start for the West Georgia Wolves, but more importantly, guys, it is our good friend and director, Corey Spates' birthday week. Yeah, man, happy birthday, It is man. Corey Spates' birthday. It's his birthday week. It's a huge day for us. Happy birthday, Corey. We can't thank you enough for all that you do for us. Make us sound good each week. You do such a great job with all of our great students. A true happy birthday, my friend. Yeah, man, happy birthday to Mr. Corey, man. We hope we get a Wolves win tonight for you. 
Two receivers to the right, two tight left. And we're going quarterback power to the left, and Cam Brown might have got a yard if that. And speaking of our good friend Corey, I do want to incorporate now going down to the sideline with the third member of our crew, Carly Pear. Carly, how's it going down there? It's going pretty good. How about y'all? Doing great. Give us a little insight of the game. Is it starting to get a little cooler down there as well? Oh, yeah, my hands are starting to freeze up a little bit. <laughs> but with that last turnover towards the end of the first quarter, it brings up the conversation of just the notorious situation that both of these teams have with turnovers. Yeah. West Georgia and West Flor West Alabama, excuse me, both have a com combined 26 and turnovers. How about this, Carly? Right, right, right on topic. We get a turnover. T. Cole called it, there got it go, knocked out, notorious. and West Alabama picks it up and runs the other way with it. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Uh, so uh, both of these teams, obviously, notorious with turnovers. So it's just going to be whichever team can use that to their advantage in the rest of the game. Well, not a good one right there as the Wolves caught a curl pass. Great insight from you, Carly. Right, yeah, on, top, right on top. Right on time with it. Darius Niles, uh, or that, excuse me, that was Artavius Washington, scooped it up and ran it the other way. T. Cole called it at about the 35. It was forced there. Looked like number eight, Uriah Ratliff. What a game. Game that young man's having. Yeah. Then big Sam Regina and who was that? Brevin Jones? Yeah, big Bre yeah, yeah, Bre Brevin. Yeah, no, that's Bryson, Bryson Wilson. Wilson. Yeah. That's Bryson Wilson tracking him down. He ran it all the way to the other 30 yard line. My that's, goodness. That's 6'6, 350 running like that. Oh, my goodness. They'll hand it off and uh, get it out to the left side with Bry Webb and down to the 26 yard line. It will be second down and six to go after a pickup of four. Ben Fortson helped come up with the stop right there, but man, I don't think Car that Carly yeah, hit the nail like, on the head, man. Right, it was like right on. As soon as she said turnover, <laughs> T. Cole fumbled the ball. Man, oh my goodness. We'll have to do that next time West Al has. Yeah, the ball, definitely. Right? Why they have it right now? Go ahead and call the call it right now. Here goes Arsenault. He's going to pass. He's got time to throw. Now he's hit as he throws. He's got an end guy in the. End zone wide open, but he overthrew him. And you can thank Jalen Tarver for that, who hit him as he threw. And Spencer Arsenault is hurt. Oh, man, he got hit right as he threw. Arsenault is hurt. I hope that young man's uh, okay, but he took a shot from yeah, Jalen Tarver. I mean, they had a guy sprinting to the back pylon open, Tyler Walker, and just was unable to stand in there and do anything, but we will take a media timeout and be right back here on the West Georgia Wolves Sports Network. financial advisor can do for you. Kevin, meet your father. Kevin. 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 Trusted advice for life. Kevin, how's your mom? Thank you. Life well planned. See what a Raymond James financial advisor can do for you.
Welcome back in UWG Productions. 11.44 to go, second quarter, and Spencer Arsenault goes out injured, and that will bring in uh, the quarterback, Tucker Nelton, who will get brought down by Keandre Williams from behind. And there goes our sack leader, Keandre Williams, uh, on a, with a big third down stop. How about it? And it'll be a fourth down, and they are in field goal range as they will bring out their kicker, Elijah Guyton, the redshirt freshman, put it in from 39 his last time out. This will be from 45. And the wind has calmed down, so let's see if he kicks it the same as he did last time. Let's we'll switch this up a little bit. Yeah, wind still in his face, though. Penton to snap it. Good hold. Kick is away. It's low, and it is good. And we do have a flag on the field. We're going to have offsides on us. This is good. There is a flag on the play. What could the flag be? I think it was offsides. That's the only thing I can think of. It's offsides. It's got to be offsides or illegal formation, one or the other. It's obviously on us because they're asking what Coach Gillian wants to do. Offsides, Offside. defense, defense, number seven. seven. The penalty is declined. The field goal is good. So West Georgia still holds strong on defense once again. Seven to six, your score, 10.52 to go, third quarter. How about Elijah Guyton, though, kicking in these kind of conditions, yeah. man? That's Give him some credit. Hard. I remember my playing days talking to kickers, man. They would say they just hate those kind of games. But uh, he's doing, that young man's doing a great job today. So here we go. It will be Kevin Butchers to kick it away. Back deep is Wesley Kennedy and LaPerion Perry. Hopefully LP will get a chance to return one. Yeah, they've been kicking it away from him, but after that Wesley Kennedy return, I think they're going to try their best to kick it out of the end zone. Well, it's going to be tough. Now the wind blowing from uh, east or from west to east. According to the flags in Old Glory. It's more out of the northeast, or northwest, I should say. And they'll kick it in over in, and this will go to Wesley Kennedy at about the seven yard line. And that's where he'll bring it, and he'll go down across the 20 to the 21 yard line, and it'll be first and 10 for West Georgia. Good coverage by West Alabama. And got to get something going here on this drive, and we'll see who steps out there for quarterback. It will still be Cam Brown. Yeah, we got to get something going soon and fast because we haven't had anything get going since our first drive, so hopefully we can do it right here. Man, we look just incredible. I mean, you couldn't have asked for a better first drive. I mean, seven plays, 75 yards, looked like a well-oiled machine. Yeah, we were clicking on all cylinders. O-line was playing well, quarterback was looking comfortable, and the receivers were catching the ball. Receivers, to eat, or, uh, one receiver, they'll pitch it out to Wesley Kennedy at the 22-yard line, and he'll get it to the 24-yard line. Maybe a gain of a yard and a half. Tough sledding right here for the Wolves, and we got a flag, and it's in the vicinity of holding. I think it's going to be holding on big Marvin James. He is a large human, isn't he? He is huge. Bungus. 6'3", 321 pounds. I think he, I, honestly, they're, they're, they marked him a few inches shorter because they have Bervin, Bervin Jones at 6'5", and he's standing the same way. Holding, Holding. number 85 of the offense. That's a 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay first down. They actually called it on, they called it on 65 or 85. I think they called it on 85. Yeah, There's got to be Zach Obi. I don't yeah. think we have a 65 on our roster. Yeah, it was 85. So first down and 18 yards now to go. Tight formation. Two receivers each side. Tight formation. Cam Brown going to throw to LP. And great job by their guy. We make the grab, get about three yards. But number 25 for them, Ben, DeLawrence Butler made a great play. He's just a freshman. Yeah, he uh, he covered LP really well. He just read the play. He stayed home, and that was a really good job by him. 
Two receivers again to each side, this time a more normal formation, not all bunched up. Wesley Kennedy beside Cam Brown. Got about six yards actually, second and 13. Could have a free play, we do. It is a free play, we're gonna throw one deep. It's incomplete. Javen West was uh, the intended receiver, but they're also gonna get pass interference. So two, two flags, flags both on West Alabama, looks like. Yeah, I didn't think that was going to be passing the fence, but I will take it. We'll definitely take it, Ben. Definitely take it. Never going to complain. Never. We can never complain about a flag that goes our way. That's rare for us. <laughs> Offside. Defense, number 38. That penalty is declined. Pass interference. Defense, number two. That's a 15-yard penalty from the previous spot and an automatic first down. Boo Birds coming out on the other side. They're pretty loud over there. Yeah, they're pretty loud for the 100 fans they got up there today. <laughs> they did bring, I mean, Livingston about a three, what, two and a half hour, three hour drive? Yeah, usually they bring a good crowd, but I'm surprised they didn't bring as many people. Two or three hours, it feels like 19 hours. Yeah, yeah definitely. You're sure right about that. Uh, all those drives on I-20 feel that way after you pass Birmingham. We'll hand it off to Kennedy. Maybe got a yard. This run defense has been stout now since that first drive for the West Al Tigers. Second and nine, Ben. Two receivers to the right side and one to the left and two to the left. We actually bring Zach Obi in now and bring Javen West on the right side instead of the left. So a couple of different changes. Zach Obi standing at the H-back position on the right side. Clock at nine minutes. Get play clock at five seconds. Brown going to roll to his right. Looking, looking, pump fakes and has to throw it away. There is going to be a flag. And I believe we're going to be called for holding again. Yeah, I think we got holding on big Bryson Wilson on that play. Yeah, it's definitely holding. And we got a guy hurt, unfortunately. I think that's Zach Obey. Holding. Offense number 67. That penalty is declined. It'll be third down. They're going to call holding. They got it on Austin Donaldson. And Zach Obey there looking at his, looking like his foot, his lower leg. I know Coach Carlson was not very happy about that. But third and nine, 8.53 to go. Good to see Zach Obey walking off with his own power. Yeah, there he is walking. Good to see. Jerry Mays will check in. Trips to the right. Javen West and LaPerry on Perry. Lockley out here to the left, up top. Wesley Kennedy beside Cam Brown, third and nine. Be nice to get a first down here. Need a big pickup. West Al showing full house blitz. They got seven guys on the line of scrimmage. We're going to get ready, get rid of it quick, guys. And now they back out of it. Brown rolling, looking, and he just has to throw it away. We had no chance at all. Great pass rush by West Al. They've started to, and West Al really has settled in here defensively a little bit. Yeah, that's one thing you don't want to do because West Al usually is the type of team that feeds off of their defensive energy. So we don't want to let them build that up. Fourth down, nine to go. Riley Mason will punt it away. 8.46 to go here in the ball game, or in the first half. Mason, high, booming punt back. And it's, it's dropped at the 20. It's dropped at the 20. We pick it up. We pick it up inside the 15 at the 14-yard line. Jerry Mays. That's what we needed right there, a play to go our way. And great job by Jerry Mays to be there to pick that ball up. Darius Knowles dropped it at the 20-yard line and muffed the punt. Rolled inside the 15 to 13. Kick recovered by the kicking team. First down, West Georgia. 
Where's Carly when you need her? <laughs> she should have called that one. Carly, you down there with us? You got anything on that? I <laughs> said with the turnovers. <laughs> got to use them to our advantage. Well, let's see if Jerry Mays can, and the West Georgia offense, great work on the UWG Productions instant replay as the Wolves will now have an opportunity inside the 15-yard line. I'm going to stand up. Let's do it. I'll two receivers to the left, two to the right. Hand to Rajay's Mosley left side. Got to the 10, spun inside to the 8. Good hard run by Rajay's Mosley. I forgot we stood on the first drive. Yeah, and we then did. Then I sat we down. Did. I'm very superstitious. Oh, yeah, I, me too. <laughs> I, I look, listen, I was standing the rest of the game. If I had to, we got to win. Oh, man. We really need a score right here, Matt. We really need one. We need one. Just two get the momentum going. Two receivers right. Good to see Zach Obi back in the ball game, along with uh, Eshawn Mays. Tight left. Hand to Mosley. Left side. Mosley inside the five. Near the first down marker, but they're going to keep him at the five. Man, he runs the ball hard, doesn't he? Yes. He God, does. we got two very special backs with Wesley Kennedy and Rajay Mosley. Here comes Trey Williams, more beef. And now we actually just trade out beef. We trade out Eshawn Mays for Trey Williams. Lockley and T. Cole, the two receivers. Zach Obi and Trey Williams are your, your tight end and your H-back. Mosley stands beside Cam Brown, 14 on the play clock. Hand to Mosley, left side. Good block by Trey Williams. Got the first down, I do believe, across the four. He did have to get to the three. I thought it was closer to the first down marker than that. It's going to be inches, Cade Perry and says, inches. Fourth and inches. I say give Rajas the ball again. Yeah. That's what I would say, dude. He's, he's the hot man right now, so go ahead and give it to him. He's going, he's, going, he's, he's going to get you one yard. What is the old adage if you can't? Um, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Well, if the old adage, you can't get a yard, you don't deserve to win the game, right? Oh, yeah, true. Definitely that. <laughs> and as an offensive lineman, this is where you want to see and you want to just say, Coach, let us get the ball. Let's run it. Brown looking, going to throw in zone to Lockley and incomplete. And Coach Dean not happy. I don't think that's what they wanted to run. Coach Dean not very happy, and I don't say that I blame him. Yeah. Incomplete to TJ Lockley. And it didn't look like Lockley was too prepared for it there. And it's incomplete. And a turnover on downs inside the five yard line at the four. Tough, tough, tough. From what I'm seeing, I think David Biden probably checked the play. It's kind of weird, but that Coach Dean was just talking to David, so I think he has something to do with that. Well, West Al will take over first and 10. With 6.30 to go here in quarter number two. A receiver to each side, tight end right, H back left. They'll hand it off to their running back, Bry Webb, and he might have got a yard. Good defense by the Wolves. I tell you what, who's having a great game? Trey Douglas, he came up from his safety position, was in on the stop. Yeah, Trey Douglas is playing fast and just relentless today. That's yeah. what you want to see from that safety position as well. Coach Masters dialing up the play call. Second down, eight to go. They'll hand to Bry Webb again. Patient run, spins into it across the 10, up to the 13, 14, 15 yard line, first down, West Alabama. So first and 10, West Alabama, two receivers to the right, one receiver to the left. Their H-back is Michael McGregor. We've heard about their tight ends. They had two guys get injured and have just been dealing with a lot of injuries and a lot of folks didn't travel. So Michael McGregor kind of being that guy today. They'll hand to Bry Webb again. And uh, Micah Thurman says, you shot out pass. He maybe yeah. gets a yard. Yeah, Micah Thurman just came out of nowhere. He looked like a missile just then. Second down, nine to go. Seven to six, Wolves lead the Tigers here in quarter number two, 503 and counting. West Al won the toss and they deferred, so they will get the ball to start the second half. Second and nine. 
Receiver up top to the right. Two receivers out here to the left. Michael McGregor in there still at that H-back position. Now handed to Bry Webb, right side, Amos Don and Jet Lee comes in and Jet Lee makes another great play. He is having a great game today, This man. is definitely Jet's best game of the season. Yes, and I love it that we need that kind of game for somebody like Jet Lee today. Looking over here, uh, Coach uh, Tyler Frazier, Jermaine Tyler Frazier over here beside us was excited on that one. Yeah, I looked definitely. over and he was, he was on his feet. He was on his feet for that one. Jet was in the right place at the right time. And it's third and long. The pump fake going to try to throw the comeback screen to the right, and they have it set up. Tackle from behind is Jordan Clark going to be close to a first down marker, and they got it. Man, they just held Demetrius Lofton and got away with it. Demetrius could have had a sack. Instead, he's tackled, and it's a first down for West Alabama. Yeah, I was for sure thinking they were going to throw a flag. I was, I was trying to hold my tongue and not scream, but I thought he was going to call a flag, but they didn't. So <laughs> we got, they got away with one right there. He pulled about a uh, foot of jersey. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely, Kay. Definitely pulled about a foot of jersey. Handed off to Bry Webb, right side, and he got nothing. As a matter of fact, he lost two yards. Wolves in hot pursuit. Uh, let's see. Is that 38? That's Jalen Brown? Yeah, that's Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown in there, or is that Brandon Booker? I can't tell with the jersey all scrunched no, no, that, up. That's, that's Jalen Brown. Brown. Yeah, <laughs> Jalen Brandon Booker is not that tall, man. <laughs> you do know these guys a lot better than I do. Yeah, man. Jalen was a freshman when I was on the team, but yeah, that's Jalen Brown right there that made the tackle. Good to see him back on the field. Trying to get the play call in. Festus looking towards the sideline. I think they got it now. They'll hand it to Bry Webb again, and Amos Don. And Brian Rice make the stop after a gain of two and a half, maybe three yards, and it will be third down and long again. See what we can do. Yeah, let's try, let's try to not let them get that first down now, fellas. Let's go. Let's be disciplined. Let's do it, Ben. Let's do it. <laughs> Got old Keon J. Williams coming back in. So third down, nine yards to go. Three receivers to the left, one receiver out to the right. Snap, three-step drop, steps up, going to deliver, and intercepted Jordan Clark. Intercepted by Jordan Clark. He's got a convoy out to the left. 25, 20, 10, 5, touchdown Jordan Clark. Touchdown Wolves. A flag. Oh, oh and there's a flag at the eight. There's oh, no way they're no. calling that a blindside block. Oh, they're going to get a flag. Jordan Clark caught it and took it the distance, but there is a flag on the play. During the return, holding. Number 45 of the return team. A 10 yard penalty is administered from the spot of the foul. It will be first down, West Georgia. Oh, I got to oh, see man. the UWG Productions replay for the hold. You called that holding, uh -huh. but you can't call it on when they're. Oh, <laughs> it's okay. We got the ball back, Matt. That's all that matters. Great yeah. play by Jordan Clark. Kind of baited, baited Tucker Nelton to throw that ball. And great interception by Jordan Clark. And it will be marked off from the nine-yard line down to the 19. So West Georgia will take over first and 10. <laughs> I tell you what, our defense is doing everything they can to give our offense opportunities. Let's see if we can take advantage of it. Yeah, we need to put points on the board right now before going into halftime. Two receivers to each side. Cam Brown with Wesley Kennedy beside him. They'll flip-flop the formation with Wesley Kennedy going to the right side at running back. Changing the play again, it looks like. Brown takes the snap. Looking now, will take off and run. Cam across the 15 to the 13-yard line and gain of about seven, second and three. And let's take a look at this beautiful shot, boys and girls. This live drone shot is courtesy of UWG's Department of Digital Experiences. Digital Experiences has taken the University of West Georgia to new heights in the areas of production and technology. Led by director and the birthday man himself, Corey Spates, and production engineer, Matt Cash, UWG can now connect and produce high-level broadcasts anywhere on campus from the master control room inside the Coliseum. This technology connects over the university's enterprise network 
providing unlimited and cost-efficient flexibility. Look at this beautiful drone shot, Ben. Man, that's a beautiful. I don't think we don't see, you don't see anything else like that in the GSC. That is. You don't see anything like that, like, period. Yeah, you really don't. <laughs> man, that is beautiful. That I is mean, truly beautiful. Nobody man. does it at our level better than what these guys do on UWG Productions. I mean, we're going to read off a lot of folks. There's about 20 folks on this crew. And they all do I a mean, great job. It's, Every person has does a great job and they yes, do their part. Absolutely. Brown will hand to Kennedy, left side. Kennedy bounces it outside, stiff arms a man across the 10 to the 9, and then hurdles over the Georgia Lottery sign. Today could be the day, and yeah, wanted the one, but not going to get one. Great run by Wesley Kennedy, though. And it's going to be close to the first down marker. I thought he got it. He needed to get to the 9.5. And, and they are, I mean, the referee is saying first down. And it's going to be first and goal for West Georgia. Rolling on the field is a first down for West Georgia. Thank you. I thought he got it. Our chain crew was still saying it was fourth down or third down and one. And we are now in the adrenaline power sports red zone. Two receivers out to the left. We are tight on the left and have a tight right as well. We'll hand and now fake it, run quarterback power up the middle across the five to the four with Cam Brown, faked it to Rajay's Mosley and just Brown, followed him the up the middle. The and it will be a, for, a second and goal from the four yard line. And another West Isle player slow to get up. This time, number 40, Devontae Jackson. Name sounds familiar, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does, doesn't it? We had a, one of those guys, the all time uh, leading all-purpose yard getter. Look at that drone shot view. Very new camera. Look at this. We're going to follow the play on this one. I like it. If that we do. is beautiful. <laughs> Two receivers to the right, wow. tight left. Bring Wesley Kennedy in motion. Hand it to Rajay's Mosley, left side. And he got up to the three-yard line, and it will be third and goal from the three. You can't get a better shot than that, man. No. Oh, my goodness. Feels like I'm on the field. Trips out to the right. T. Cole, Michael Tubbs, Javen West. Big third down. I'm standing up, Ben. I'm standing up with you. Cam Brown rolling to his right. Looking, looking. End zone overthrows Michael Tubbs. And give credit again, number 26, Michael McGregor brought the pressure and we're going to have to kick a field goal. Yeah, let's get let's go ahead and just get the points and just take it into halftime. And that's that's how, I know on coach Gene, that's what he's going to do. So Brock Pellegrino will kick it 9 seconds on that second quarter clock. And Pellegrino will kick it away. Snap will come from Reed Reagan. Hold from Pate Hogan. Kick is up. It is through the uprights. It looks good because it is good. You saw that pretty, uh, pretty clear through our great drone shot. Six seconds left here in the second quarter. Wolves lead the Tigers 10-6. to six. Timeout here on the field, but we'll keep it here as we get ready to wrap up the second half. The... Uh, Taking a look at some scores. Uh, the Phillies lead the Braves one to nothing. So one to nothing in the bottom of the fourth inning. Are you a big Braves fan like I am, Ben? I'm going uh, to the game on Monday. Oh, you are? Yeah. I'm, catch one with you. I'm not a big baseball type guy, uh, but I do like to watch baseball. But yeah, I always have my Braves guy. Okay, good. Only thing in Georgia that I root good. for. I know you're a big Detroit guy. Yeah, I'm a big Detroit guy, man. Michigan. Detroit teams. There's our great cheerleaders. The greatest cheerleaders in the nation. Yeah, they are. You know what would be great? We tried to get it last year, Ben, but Talk to, to get them. to get Cade Perry and to get held up by the cheerleaders on the sideline. What do you think? They can do it. Trust me. If you see, I see them in the when I was playing. We see, you see those girls and guys in the weight room. Emmy. Oh, Instant my Emmy award. <laughs> and this is. Uh, are dancers with attitude right here. BWA right there. 
So are they about, are they about to dance right now? They're dan they're, they're supposed okay. to be. I don't know if they know they're on UWG Productions, but we'll kick it away. Tyler Davalos inside the five, down to the two. If they fumble it, and we have to come down and hit them, and they got a whole right side, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. Midfield will tackle them there, but that'll be the final play of the half with your score 10 to 6 we'll hold for carly and Cade to catch up with coach dean here and we got a scrum in the middle hold your horses folks don't don't make do anything dumb right before the half bestest davies and crew are coming back over good job by marcus gary that's a good senior leader to get everybody out of there so we'll try to catch up with coach dean here I see Coach Dean right there at the 30-yard line. Cade and Carly are hanging out in the end zone, and they're going to catch Coach Dean as he's walking. Cade's holding up his arm. There he is. We appreciate Coach Dean uh, on a hop now for us. And let's send it down to our sideline folks, Cade and Carly, with Coach David Always Dean. Always appreciate it when Coach David Dean jogs towards me. <laughs> Coach, defensively, we're, we're, we're getting them really, really good off the line of scrimmage. What do we need to address in the second half? Offensively, we're just sleepwalking. After the first series, I guess we were satisfied with seven points. I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's as bad of a performance as we could do uh, offensively. We're not finishing blocks. We're not making the right reads and snapping the ball when we're not supposed to. We're just we're, we're leaving them in the game, unfortunately. I can think of no no better coach to fix it offensively than you. you know, we're gonna we're gonna do our best. We, you know, we just. They're there. We just got to have some confidence in what we're doing. And I think right now, offensively, we lack a lot of confidence. We got to find a way to get that confidence back. All right, Coach. Thanks. Go Wolves. Thank you, Cade and Carly down there with Coach David Dean. And he hit the nail on the head. And we'll talk about that in our second half. Keys with our great UWG Productions team. 10-6 to six at the half. Back after this. Hello, West Georgia fans. My name is Micah Noel, and thank you for watching WTV News Brief. We here at WTV would like to thank our veterans, active duty personnel, and first responders for their service. Located on the first floor of Parker Hall is the home of the university's Veterans and Military Programs Office. According to the Office of Institutional Effectiveness and Assessment, in fall 2022, UWG enrolled 197 active military students and 338 veteran students. For the past five years, the program allows current and former service members to enhance their educational experience. Fire Station Number 9 continues to serve the Carroll community, opening in 1982. But now, as the busiest station in the county, Fire Chief Chuck Barnwell says that the current facility no longer serves current personnel. The design of the new facility includes new training areas, larger emergency vehicle spaces, and the ability to support five personnel per shift rather than its current two personnel per shift. Construction will be completed in late 2025. Eight freshmen are sworn in as senators by the members of the Student Government Association to represent their peers across campus. Just over a month into their jobs, they participate in all general body and committee meetings. Their primary purpose is to address their fellow freshmen's concerns. Some recent concerns raised during the SGA meeting include transportation, parking, and food services. For Resolve, SGA representatives collaborate with executive council members to create plans for finding resources and solutions for each matter. According to the Centers for Disease Control, breast cancer is the second most common cancer among women in the United States. One in eight women will be diagnosed with breast cancer, while one in 100 men will be diagnosed. The United States Preventative Services Task Force now recommends that women start breast cancer screening at age 40 instead of age 50. Thank you for watching WTV News Brief. And remember, enjoy the game and go West, go Wolves. Tell Logan to come in in 10, 9, 8, eight 7, 6, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Go, Logan. And we're back. UWG Productions is a student-led organization where the students are playing a big part in broadcasts of sports and other student events, but it's mostly the sports like volleyball and football and soccer. But the students are entirely like leading the production and the project. Um, and it, it allows us to get like really good hands-on experience and, and it's really fun. We just kind of have fun with it. 
My favorite part about UWG Productions is how hands-on we can be right when we start. My favorite part is how it was instantly hands-on from day one. I can say that having the hands-on experience that I did through this organization absolutely padded my resume, absolutely made me a more communicative leader, made me a better team member, and made me a better filmmaker as a whole. It's not like we have to, you know, sit back and shadow somebody for a long time. We get to jump right in because it is a student-led uh, production team. So I think that's my favorite part about it, how we get to be so hands-on with, with all the equipment. I think it's the greatest learning atmosphere on campus where you don't you can have no skills and you can come on try it you can keep learning there'll be somebody on your shoulder you got somebody in your headset telling you like hey frame it this way and you start learning and I just thought that was the greatest experience is kind of getting thrown in the fire see what you got and then we'll learn based on that it was a hey here's the camera we're gonna go to a practice and if you mess up you mess up and that's okay now you know and so that's something that I really liked about incorporating new students into the, the family. <laughs> well, I mean, I love the school as itself, but it was just really cool to be able to find like my niche. Like they had exactly what I wanted. So if you're really into live production, like sports, and especially like camera stuff, I definitely say come in and get your hands on that because it's a really good opportunity. And I don't think a lot of other places offer that but it's really special that UWG does. We need to get that on camera. That could be a nice little package right there. Me and Alex were walking in together. We're always just like, what's Corey going to say? Georgia's number one stop for everything Polaris and more. Adrenaline Power Sports is your locally owned power sports dealer, providing everything for work and play. From Polaris ATVs to side-by-sides. And from GEM electric low-speed vehicles to trailers. We've got you covered. Come visit our dependable service and parts departments. Or stop and check out our wide selection of new and used inventory. Here at Adrenaline Power Sports, we strive to support our local community and provide excellent customer service to all. Come see us in Griffin or visit us online at AdrenalinePWR.com. We're proud sponsors of the University of West Georgia Athletics Department. Go Wolves! Welcome to the pack. 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 University of West Georgia students, faculty, staff, and distinguished guests. I am Tyler McCoy, your 71st student body president. Our university is a community that thrives on the contributions of all its members, a place where diversity in thought and experience is not only encouraged, but celebrated. Our goal in the McCoy Frisk administration is to ensure that this vibrant tapestry of voices is adequately represented in your student government association. We are deeply committed to creating an SGA that reflects the full range of your student body. To that end, we are actively working on an action plan to promote diversity, inclusivity, and broad participation in our student government. We want to see an SGA that is not just for the select few, but one where everyone's voice matters, where everyone can have a say in sharing our shared future. At the same time, we recognize that our SGA must be a relevant and meaningful part of your everyday lives. We are committed to increasing our visibility on campus not just as a governing body, 
but a resource for each one of you. As a part of our plan, we aim to create signature programs that can provide real value to you as students. These programs will be geared towards addressing your needs, your aspirations, and the challenges you face. We are here to serve you, and we want to work to make a tangible difference in your UWG experience. I believe in the power of student government as a force for positive change, as a bridge that connects the administration and the students, and as a platform for student voices. Our mission in the McCoy Frisk administration is to build an SGA that truly lives up to these ideals, but we cannot do it alone. We need your insights, your perspectives, and your active participation. Let's work together to build a brighter future for our UWG community. Thank you, and let's make this a great year. Go Wolves. or hall are you with? I'm a freshman and I'm with University Suites. We're A, B, B, <laughs> I'm here with the Villages, the Kappa Alpha Order. The one and only all review. How has your experience been at uh, Battle of the Hall so far? It's been good, very loud, love the spirit. Listen, the energy is high and it is crazy out here. So if you haven't been, you got to make sure you come. It's been good. We just won that last game. Oh my gosh, it was so crazy. All right, and what event were you guys just doing just now? So we just did a tug of war. Yeah. yeah it got a little heated and they were pulling and then the rope just snapped. It was it was crazy. Can you show us the evidence right there? Yeah. So. <laughs> uh -oh. This is half of the rope. You know, it was a lot of alpha male energy over there. Um, we didn't expect that. We were just running the back, but you know, we just too strong. We live. I'm not looking for a college to help me find myself. I'm looking for a college to help me be myself. A place to ignite my passion and fire my imagination. I'm looking for a place that will open new horizons for me. I want a place that will fuel me and put me on the track to the career of my dreams. A place that will spark my curiosity and satisfy my hunger for ideas. A place that will challenge me to the fullest, that will guide me and that will inspire me. I want to be around people who will support me, appreciate me for who I am and embrace me as I start my journey. I want a place that will give me the tools that I need to succeed in the career that I choose. I'm going to college at a place that will prepare me to win. I'm ready to make a difference. I know what I want. I know where I'm going. I'm ready to launch the me that I can be. And I am West. This is the University of West Georgia. Hello, my name is Kai Morgan. I'm here with UWG Productions, and we're going to show you our production setup for football because we have a broadcast in a couple of hours. Here we have our Sony 4K camera on the roof. This is one of our camera setups, and over here is our PTZ cam brought into the control room over the University Enterprise Network to give us NDI video. And now I'm going to send it to Shamaya in the operation room. Hey y'all, my name is Shamaya. I'm here in the operations room. Here we have a in-house audio where we pretty much control all of our music for the stream and in-house. We have our PA announcer here as well. We also house another camera in this area and we're also engineered to where we can talk back to the control room at any time. Now I'm gonna throw to Kai in our TV room. 
A big part of a broadcast is communication. Currently, I'm in our play-by-play -play booth where our play-by-play -play and color analysts can see the field beautifully from the 50-yard line. And we have these talkback boxes where they can talk back directly to the control room to keep that communication flowing. Additionally, we have our Ada cams and GVM light kits so we can have a personal view of the talent and to keep our image balanced. And now, I'm gonna throw it to Shamaya on the AOB porch. Hey y'all, so now I'm at the Athletic Operations Building where we house our end zone camera angle. And what's cool about this camera angle is we also get a lot of our replay shots from this angle and we also have a great view of our home sideline. Now I'm gonna throw it back to Kai at our low end zone camera position. Hello everyone, here I am at our low angle camera position. Now this position is crucial because it shows whether someone scored or not at the goal line. And now I'm gonna throw it to Shamaya over on the opposite side of the field. Hey y'all, so now I'm down on the field with our wireless cam. We use Hollyland technology, our transmitter and receiver, to get pretty much anywhere on the field. We also have a boom mic attached to a pole for our net sound for our broadcast. Here we are in the control room where we have all of our camera's feeds coming in successfully. If you want to tune in to any of our broadcasts throughout the year, you can find us online at UWG Productions' YouTube page. Bye! <laughs> Ponytail on the top of the fountain ponytail. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Are you taking pictures or video? That's video. Oh. <laughs> loading. <laughs> we're coming loading. 2022. Oh, yeah. Sell it. Sell it, Grace. 2022. We're so happy to be here. The Anagama kind of came from a lineage of uh, Japanese cave kilns, that's what anagama means, is cave kiln. And that technology found its way through Korea to Japan, and then the Japanese perfected it to uh, the kind of current state that it's in now. So yeah, that's it in general, wood fire. Wood's the fuel. Wood has been the fuel for firing ceramics for centuries. The wood ash, in this case, becomes the glaze that accumulates on the pieces. Surface on that. Yeah, I mean, there's all kinds of We were just talking about uh, glaze chemistry today in class, and art in general, regardless of the uh, discipline, is undergirded with all kinds of science, physics, chemistry. Yeah, it's all the it's all of the above, really. I think art is one of the uh, disciplines, the pursuits, where it's all in there, we might not see it, but, and maybe we should more. All the students, we start at square one every semester, no wood, empty kiln, you know, typically the kiln's in some state of disrepair from the last firing, so we fix it, we clean it, we tend to everything, we arrange, we organize, we stage, we go through the whole process, there's shifts, uh, everyone has a four hour shift, uh, two four hour shifts, excuse me, that they're responsible for, so, it's, it's everything from kind of life skill managing, um, following through to uh, all the nitty gritty. But I think the real transformative thing is, is the, the people, the transformation that occurs with them. Um, I've had students that were, didn't want to do, didn't want to get near this thing. They were afraid of it. It's, you know, it's like you're right up against the sun and you have to wear protective gear and there's a, there's a fear factor. <laughs> <laughs> Trademark, copyright. Um, so students, uh, you know, overcome a lot of things and they, they walk away with, like they did that. We did that. It was a big thing and we did that. So it lays the groundwork for a lot of other things to occur when they're not here, when they graduate, when they do the next thing they're going to do.
Back at it for the second half of West Georgia Wolves football on UWG Productions. Kiss 102.7 in the UWG Sports Network. Thank you all for tuning in and listening. Ben Walters alongside Matt Skinner. It's been a fun one so far. Back and forth affair. West Georgia leads 10 to 6. We have not played our best offensively, Ben, since that first drive of the game. I mean, we played extremely well in that first drive. Seven plays, 75 yards, complete domination. Since then, uh, do the math, uh, not good with math, 138 yards total for the Wolves. So we've had more in that first drive than we've had the rest of the ball game so far. Yeah, it's just like the offense just flipped the switch off. And um, I think we need to flip that switch back on. Um, and Coach, just, Coach Dean alluded to that in the interview with Cade and Carly. Yeah, definitely. And so we just want to see this offense just get back to how they were their very first drive. And if we do, we'll win this game easily. Yeah, I think you're right. And with West Al, I mean, you've got to give credit to our defense. They've only allowed 54 yards on 30 plays. Yeah, I think we have more penalties than they do yards, honestly. I haven't looked at it, but um, we – Penalty yard, you're talking yeah, about penalty, penalty yards, yards yeah. yeah. Looking at penalty yards, we have we have 40 yards in penalties and they have 54 yards of offense. So you're yeah. you're about right. I mean, uh, that's been the story of the game: the two turnovers for us, and and, and the couple of uh, costly penalties. Uh, time of possession is pretty equal. Both teams one of nine on third down, and West Georgia just one of eight on third down. So uh, no, neither team has been able to convert on third down uh, very well tonight. West Georgia has punted four times. Riley Mason, four punts for 38 and a half yards, and they've punted four times for 36 yards. Uh, they did have their their starting quarterback, Spencer Ar uh, Arsenal. He got hurt uh, in the early going. He was two for four for nine yards, and then Tucker Melton came on, and Melton, uh, five out of 13 in an interception and 36 yards. They do have two very uh, good field goals considering the win, Ben, into the win, 35-yarder and a 40-yarder. Then we had a Brock Pellegrino field goal right before the half. Yeah, uh, other than that first drive, it's been a pretty equal game, honestly. Um, and let's just see we have a better second half for the Wolves. That's all you can ask for. Uh, we are getting ready to kick things off. Tyler Davalos will kick it off. And we will have the wind in the fourth quarter. So that's a solid. Trying to look at some uh, Division II football scores for you. West Florida leads shorter, 21 to three. And that's a second quarter score. Let's see here. I know Delta beat up Valdosta pretty bad today. Delta, I'm looking for, and that was the score I was looking for here on D2.com. Uh, Tuscaloosa beat Carson Newman. Uh, Chawan, uh, North Greenville beat Chawan 31-16. Those are our next two opponents, and we'll take a look at our next five games a little bit later on in the broadcast. We are underway here in the second half. End over end kick will go down to Darius Nalls to the left side, and Nalls uh, muffed a punt there in the first half. Michael Thurman can't make the stop at the 25, 30, 35, 40, out of bounds near the 41-yard line, and Darius Nalls with a great return for West Al in our kickoff coverage. Unable to do much right there. Yeah, I just glanced over at Coach Dorman. He didn't have a good look on his face. That's two kickoffs uh, returns back to back. And that's our special teams coordinator right there. And he harps on making sure we keep our kickers, those, those return yards inside the 25. So I know he's not happy with those two. So first and 10 for West Alabama. They will keep. Um, they're back up in the ball game, so I guess their starter, Arsenault, will no longer be able to go in this game, at least one would think. Uh, so they will go with their starter, that is, or their backup, that is uh, Tucker Nelton, who was actually listed on the two deep as the starter today. But Arsenault uh, played a lot last week. And what do we got? Please reset the game clock to 1448. 14:48. Yeah, I guess we probably do need to put some time back on the clock. The clock, yeah. there's no way 22 seconds no way. right off the clock there. Thank you. Thank you to the, the white hat, Mr. Charles Olson tonight. Let's see here. Three, now four receivers going out to the right, including their running back, Webb. Now they'll bring Nalls across. They're going to run a screen out there to him. And we make a great play with Kel Bright. 
What a play by Kel Bright out here behind the line of scrimmage. Our defensive backs have played very well tonight. That's a loss of five on the completion to Darius Knowles. Yeah, that was a great play by, by Kel Bright. And Coach Masters, that's, he coaches those safeties up really good, and he preaches discipline, and he was real disciplined on that play right there. So Kel Bright with a huge stop behind the line of scrimmage and a loss of five, second and 15. Now quads out to the left. Ooh. And a receiver out of the right. We're going full house backfield or full house uh, gel break blitz is what they call it. They run a slant, and Kamai and Fagans was there to help break it up. And the intended receiver was Tyler Walker. And it's third down and long, third and 15. We brought seven on there yeah. on that play, Ben. And that's unusual for us, but we we brought the house and it and it worked. So let's go ahead and see what we bring this play. We're in that um that pass for a set right here with Abu and um, Keandre on the same side. So look for some twist formation right here. Third Stance. and 15, they're gonna run a draw and we play it perfectly. Kamai and Fagans and Xavier Robinson are there. Only a gain of three and it'll be third and 12. Time to punt it away for West Al and we'll see what the Wolves offense can now do. Great job by the, by the West Georgia defense coming out and setting the tone early in the second half, man. They're keeping that same momentum. So Wesley Kennedy back deep to return. Punter is Trey Sullivan. Takes his time and delivers a high spiral that will hit at the 23-yard 20, uh, line, roll inside the 10, down to the 9-yard line, and it will be first and 10 for the Wolves at the 9-yard line. Let's go 91 yards right here, Ben. Yeah, let's go 91 yards like you said, Matt, and let's just – do what we did on that first drive, man. Everybody do their job, and I'm pretty sure that's what Coach Dean said at halftime, and we'll, we'll come out of this game with a W. So here we go. Offensive line with, with our starters. Wesley Kennedy in there, Zach Obie. We'll go three wide receivers to the right and a tight left. Lockley, T. Cole, and Lil Perry on Perry. They'll hand to Kennedy, left side. Kennedy cut back, hit at the 10, the 11, now across to the 12. Might have got up to the 13. Wesley Kennedy earned those yards. Yeah. It'll be second and about six. Yeah, that was a, a very hard run for, by Wesley Kennedy right there. He got those extra three yards after getting hit at the, at the line of scrimmage. Second and six, 12.58 to go here in the third quarter. Staying in front of the chains is what you want to do. And we are in tight. Lockley back to the numbers. Everybody else in tight in between the hash marks. They'll hand off to Kennedy again. Gets to the 15, maybe the 16-yard line. Still dragging West Alabama defenders. Number 32 in on the stop. Jamal Ellis along with a host of Tigers. And they're going to give them up to the 16-yard line. Wow. I love the spot. We'll take it. Good hard running by Wesley Kennedy. Third down. About three to go. That's LaPerion Perry coming in for, uh, was that Zach Obi? It is indeed. Uh, Trey Williams in there. LP will flip flop with Lockley. 10 seconds on the play clock. Going to have to go pretty quickly here. Kennedy beside Brown. Trips out to the right. Five seconds on the play clock. Having to hurry, Brown takes the snap, looking, going to throw it to Trey Williams, and he had the first down, but then he ran backwards, and then he's going to get lose it to the 20 or to the 17 yard line. He was at the first down marker, Ben, yeah. but ran backwards. I think he thought he was going to make something happen going to the sideline, but knowing Trey as big as he is, I thought he was going to keep going forward. Oh man, tough, tough break for the Wolves there, as he caught the ball right near the first down marker and went in reverse. Oh, man. So Riley Mason will punt it away. Everybody in tight. Darius Knowles back deep to return. Good snap by Reagan. Mason will punt it away across midfield to the 45 and will take a Wolves roll to the 43-yard line. And it will be first and 10 West Alabama from that place when we come back with 11.06 to go here in quarter number three. West Georgia 
leads the Tigers 10 to six here on UWG Productions and KISS 102.7. Back after this. I'm not looking for a college to help me find myself. I'm looking for a college to help me be myself. A place to ignite my passion and fire my imagination. I'm looking for a place that will open new horizons for me. I want a place that will fuel me and put me on the track to the career of my dreams. A place that will spark my curiosity and satisfy my hunger for ideas. A place that will challenge me to the fullest, that will guide me and that will inspire me. I wanna be around people who will support me, appreciate me for who I am and embrace me as I start my journey. I want a place that will give me the tools that I need to succeed in the career that I choose. I'm going to college at a place that will prepare me to win. I'm ready to make a difference. I know what I want. I know where I'm going. I'm ready to launch the me that I can be. And I am West. This is the University of West Georgia. Back at it here on UWG Productions, KISS 102.7. 11.05 to go. They'll hand it off right side to their running back, Bry Webb, and it's going to come back for a holding penalty, but credit Jordan Clark, who's played a well of a game. Him and Xavier Robinson ran him out of bounds after a gain of three, but... Holding. holding. Offense Offense number 75. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Still first down. Officials time out for injury. There is an uh, injured Tiger, and it is Bry Webb, their running back. And hate to see that. Yeah, I think he was holding his left ankle. He got Coach Dean checking on him, too, making sure he was okay. Well, it's not so as every- has lost a lot of players this game, yeah. too. So they're down their starting quarterback, and now Bry Webb, they're starting running back out of the ball game. So they're going to have to turn to, we'll see who, that's 28. Antonio Brown's listed as their backup, but Hunter Kilpatrick is in the ball game right now. Braden Jenkins is also in there. They got a lot of players coming in as backups. I'm pretty sure they're playing a lot of young guys as well, too. Well, Bryce Harper, unfortunately, just hit a home run. It's now two to nothing. The Philadelphia Phillies lead the Braves, unfortunately. 2-0? Yeah, back at it. They'll hand it off, and Xavier Robinson, man. Gain of one, big hit there. Second down and long. And he gave it right to their, uh, right to the guy we were talking about, Braden Jenkins, who came into the ball game. He checks in, so Antonio uh, Baker will not be there, uh, or Antonio Brown will not be their backup. I haven't seen a zero on the sideline tonight. Yeah, I haven't either, so I was just wondering, yeah. is, is he hurt as well? Or? Well, they'll hand it to him this time, and he breaks one to the 40, across the 45 to the 46, maybe the 47. Big pickup of about 14 yards, and it'll make it third and manageable now. It'll be third and about six. Nice run by uh, Brown, or uh, excuse me, Jenkins, Braden Jenkins. Here on UWG Productions, two receivers to the right, one to the left. 
Third down, Let's see if we can get off the field. We bring late pressure with Douglas, thrown across the middle, and we had it intercepted. Deontay Overstreet basically knocked it away from Jabron Claude, and Jabron Claude was standing at the 30-yard line. We had four people there and a convoy, and it might have been a pick six. Yeah, Jabron was like, come on, man. man. Let me have that. <laughs> let me have it. But either way, the Wolves come off the field, man. The defense I mean, look comes at off this. the field. but. Overstreet tipped it away from Jabron. <laughs> but you can't be mad at Overstreet because he's known for making spectacular picks like that as Man. well. But whew, Oh, that definitely not. Def you can't be mad at yeah, him. He wouldn't have made a play. I mean, so Wesley Kennedy calls for fair catch after the punt by Trey Sullivan. We'll keep it here with 9.31 to go. Okay, offense, let's get this thing going, man. Let's go. You know, that's that's that, that's all they have to do right now, just get rolling, get into a rhythm. So first and 10, West Georgia, ball at the 21-yard line. Rajay's Mosley. Checks in. Two receivers to the left. Tight right, receiver up top as well. Snap, we'll a little, run a little flea flick, flicker. Brown gonna throw and incomplete. Had T. Cole kind of get tripped up and T. Cole almost broke open, but he tripped up. He might have had an opportunity there, but a little trickeration for the Wolves to start out here. T. Cole had three defenders <laughs> around him. I'm not, not real yeah. sure he was gonna break free. <laughs> Looking at the UWG Productions instant replay. Got involved with two Tigers at the top of the screen. Good hand fight, good no call. Brown will step up on second and 10 across the 20, and then a big hit by number 26, Michael McGregor. And another West Alabama Tiger is down, and it will be third down. Ball at the 23-yard line, and he gets right back up quickly. Is that Kale Williams? Number, yeah, that's number, number two, Kale two, Williams. Kale yeah. Williams, defensive back. Yeah. Hope to see him get back in the ball game at some point. Third down and eight to go. Two receivers each side. Cam Brown. And we're going to get called for a false start. I believe Lockley moved, flinched. False start. Offense number three. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. I tell you what, man. We looked as good as we looked all season on that first drive. That seven-play, 75-yard drive. And since then, have just have not been able to get anything going. Yeah, we like I said at, at halftime, we just turned the switch off, and it looks like we're not trying to turn it back on right now. So, Brown going to throw underneath at the 20 to Rajay's Mosley, and we'll have to punt again up to the 24-yard line to Rajay's Mosley. And good defense by West Alabama. We knew their defense was stingy. Yeah, right now it's a battle of the defenses. So. Um, Somebody's got to win a game, and right now we have the lead, but we have to, on offense, we have to flip the table right now. We have to. Somebody has to stand up and get his offense going. So Riley Mason will be asked to punt again. Darius Nalls standing back. End over end punt. The 45 up to the 41-yard line, and Steven Peterson will mark it dead for play there. And Kevin Hemphill will come on the field, which means it's time for immediate timeout. And we'll be back right after this on UWG Productions.
whatever they went through, they went through together. Welcome, guys. Life well planned. See what a Raymond James financial advisor can do for you. Kevin, meet your father. Kevin. 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 Trusted advice for life. Kevin, how's your mom? Thank you. Life well planned. See what a Raymond James financial advisor can do for you. Seven fifty-eight to go, third quarter. West Alabama football on the forty-one yard line, driving from left to right. As it's got a little chill in the air, Ben. Yes. West Georgia up ten to six. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. H back right as well. Looks like the starters back in. Spencer Arsenault is back in. That's good to see for them. Up across to the forty-four to the forty-five yard line. We'll see if that was Webb or not that took the carry. It was not. So, uh, Braden Jenkins is still in the ball game at running back for West Al. Gain of about three and a half, four yards, second and six. We also got number 28 in there, too, as well. The other running back. So yeah, who's having, yeah. To, who's having to play the that tight back. end. Yeah. yeah. Hunter Kilpatrick. They're taking a lot of injuries, yeah. man. It's crazy. Up the middle to Jenkins again near midfield and got to midfield. And that will be third down now after a gain of five. It'll be third and nine or third and one. DeAndre Williams in on the stop. And let's see if we can get another stop here on third down. We've been doing it all game, so let's see if we can get it one more time for us, man. We our defense is what's been keeping us alive right now, honestly. West, West Al, one of 11 on third down. Whew. Snap, hands to Jenkins up the middle. He's, they're going to be two for 12 now as they get the first down across to the 48-yard line. So first down, West Al, three straight runs by Jenkins. God, that's got to be their first first down of the half, I know, and then... Or at least on third down, they have not been good on third down. I think that's their Nobody's first, been good on third nobody down. Nobody has, but I think that's their first one since the first quarter, honestly, if yeah, I'm correct. Yeah. They'll hand to Jenkins again, and we hit him right at the line of scrimmage. Amos, Don, and Micah Thurman. Gain of maybe one. Great work by those guys. We are very deep at linebacker. Yeah, yeah, we are. We can play five guys at linebacker on any given game, honestly. Amos Don, just a junior. Xavier Robinson, a junior. Festus Davies, a sophomore. Micah Thurman, a sophomore. Or yeah, sophomore. Jalen Tarver, the lone senior there. Keandre Williams, a junior, yeah. too. So, Very deep group going to return next year for the Wolves. Second and nine. Two receivers left, one to the right. Arsenault looking to pass. To looks to his favorite receiver, Knowles. Completes it. To the 35-yard line, he's tackled immediately there by Kamai and Fagans. First down, West Alabama. Tigers starting to move the ball a little bit. 5-10 to go here on a third quarter clock. Cade down on the sideline with shorts. Is it cold down there, Cade? I'm cold up here in the booth. You know, my, I mean, just my coolness in general kind of <laughs> evens out the temperature for me. So, no, it's not that bad. Okay, good. And you can't get any cooler than Cade, man. <laughs> Two receivers to the left, one to the right. They'll hand to uh, Jenkins. Gain of maybe two yards. We already heard Carly's weather report. She said her hands were cold. My hands are always cold. I'll tell you the worst part about being on the sidelines for this game is both offenses are really boring. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> it has been a very slow, we'll, we'll say slow and boring offense tonight. Very lethargic. Yeah. Very lethargic. So second down and seven to go, or uh, eight to go, after the two-yard game by Jenkins on first down, that same formation. A hand to Jenkins right side. And how about uh, Amos Don from the back side gets up and pulls out a sniper rifle there. <laughs> He's tackling with his fingers. Man. Yeah, oh, my he did. Goodness. He did. That was a great play by Amos Don, man. Like we just said before, our linebackers are deep, and they all have a unique style of play, and that's Amos Dunn, Amos Dunn's style of play, too, is just being everywhere on the field. So third and eight. See if we can they – they are in probably close to field goal range, depending on how much they get right here, may determine whether they go for it or not. Definitely four down territory possible. Oh, my Arsenault goodness. Holding. Going to pass. Looking and rolling left. Amos Don going to roll out. And, man, I think he fell forward for the first down. Jet Lee was out there. We didn't want to hit him because we didn't want to have a necessary roughness, I guess. I don't know. But we just let him spin and get the first down across the 35 or the 25. Yeah, I thought they, they probably thought he was going to slide, but, I mean, he was in play. They should have just gave him a, get, a tackle him, but let's see. On I mean, here's Don and Jet Lee both. And just credit Arsenault. Man, he just wanted it more there. Yeah, it looked like he was going to head out of bounds, and then he just spun and got, got the first down. Arsenal looking to pass, and he's going to be sacked. Ball came out. Micah Thurman sacked him. We scoop it, and Keandre Williams is going to run it back to better. 15, 10, 5, touchdown, West Georgia. Man, great job. Who was that on that on that sack? I can, I can get a number. That was Micah Thurman. Great job, Micah. Micah Thurman sacked him. Ball came out. We scoop and score, and Keandre Williams. Keandre Williams takes it about 48 yards or so. Who needs offense when you can score on defense? Hey, man. Hey, great. <laughs> that, that's a great saying right there because our offense, like we said, has been real lethargic, and our defense has been playing stout today, and that's another that's great defensive play. That's technically our second defensive touchdown tonight. We had the pick six that we yeah. had the holding call on. 16 to 6. Keandre Williams scoop and score after the Micah Thurman sack. And, man, that's got to be deflating for West Alabama after a huge play by Arsenault. And we are going to have a challenge flag. And, I mean, you almost have to, right? Yeah, you have to. You almost that, that's have a, to. That's a turning point in the game right, right. there. So, I'm not, I would, if I was a coach on that, on that end of the field, so I would do that same thing. Here's the replay. Thurman hits him. He's out. out. Yep. It's, yeah, it's a out. Yep. It's out. We're good. This will take about five seconds. This will take about five seconds. As a matter of fact. Don't jinx it, Matt. Remember the last <laughs> time we did this, you said it'd take five seconds, well, and it took five minutes for the video to work. Well, listen. What if the as long as the video is working and it's proper. We should, it shouldn't it take is, that it long is, at all. It is as clear cut as it could possibly be. Keontae Williams going back to his meta receiver days. He was <laughs> running like he was a receiver. That's uh, a great job for the big fella, man. He, he, all the hard work he's put in, he deserves that touchdown for sure. Great job, Keontae. So officials continuing to look at it underneath the big red tent, the Gulf South Conference. Tent. All right, guys. It shouldn't take that long now, cause we. I mean, come on. Trying to like to try and get the iPad to work. You should always listen to your sideline <laughs> guy, Ben. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna start listening to you more now. Often, but, um, now often, uh, Kate. <laughs> Looks like he's playing Rocket League on the iPad. All right, he put it down. Okay, good. Well, we're keeping the PAT team out. Hey, it didn't take that long. Coach Patterson giving us the <laughs> let's go. 
everybody that doesn't know Coach Patterson, he's like our hype coach, man. He keeps us going. Here. The ruling on the field of a fumble is confirmed. Aha! Uh -huh. It's a touchdown for West confirmed. Georgia. Confirmed. Not even stands. Yeah, the next play will be next play. Play. I'm not saying, what are you going to say? <laughs> he was like okay. dramatic pause, but both PAT and PAT defense teams are on the field. West Alabama is charged with a timeout. Oh. And has lost their challenge for the game. That's one thing that hurts with that challenge. You lose a timeout, man, so. But I mean, if I'm coached there and I thought in any – I would have yeah, also, I I well, yeah. also thrown the challenge flag there as well, unless I just absolutely knew that it was a fumble. And after seeing the replay, it clearly was, as Brock Pellegrino will put it through the uprights. And the Wolves lead 17-6 to with 2.30 to go here in quarter number three. Let's send it down to Carly. She's down there. Let's talk a little bit about those turnovers, Carly. Again, it's been the story tonight. And here we are again as we see Keandre Williams running it back on the big screen. So, like we said, both of these teams are notorious for turnovers. And honestly, their turnovers have defined most of their last games. I know with West Georgia, when we were at West Florida last week, or two weeks ago, because last week was our bye week, we lost 49 to 21 because of four turnovers. Yeah. So, I mean, they have a big impact, and both of these teams are, like I said, notorious for them. So, it's just whichever one can do them more. Well, that one was in the positive for the Wolves, thanks to Micah Thurman and Keandre Williams. Let's see if we can't get another stop right here. We finally get a football. <laughs> Tyler Davalos was looking for a football. So he'll tee it up on a green tee. What is it with kickers and their different color tees? I don't know. I think it's just how they're feeling for the game. <laughs> I never really paid attention, but now that you say that, it's like they change it every game, though. <laughs> Could be superstition. Yeah. 2.30 to go here in the third quarter. West Georgia clinging to a 17-6 lead over the Tigers. End over end kick. We'll send them back inside the 10 to the nine yard line. This is uh, John Hilbert, who is brought down by, is that Marcus Gary? You know it. <laughs> He's gonna let you know if he hits somebody, I tell you what. Yeah, man, Marcus is, like I say, he's a man of very few words, but he's, his actions speak on that field. He I was plays about a to lot say, of heart. For somebody that's a man of few words, he sure does have some actions on the field. You got to love a senior like Marcus Gary, man. He's one of those guys who does everything the right way. And that's how he gets on the field. He's one of those guys that you can trust. Georgia leading Kentucky 21-7. to Some other scores from around. Phillies lead the Braves 2 to nothing. Michigan leading Minnesota 10-3. to Ole Miss over Arkansas 10-7. to Louisville leads Notre Dame 7 to nothing. Georgia Tech and Miami just kicked. How about that Red River robbery today? We'll talk a little bit about that later, but let's get back to Hodge or to um, yeah Jenkins, Braden Jenkins on the carry, gain of about three. It'd be second and seven, two twelve and counting here on the third quarter clock. Two receivers remain up top. One down here on the on the bottom side, Darius Nalls. As West Al got to get some kind of points here on this drive. Yeah, their offense has been stalled all game, and um, our defense has been playing well. If they keep playing like they are, they're not going to get any points. Back to Jenkins, a good run, and Jeremy Smith trips him up across the 30 to the 32-yard line. It will be first down West Alabama up to the 33. If you don't count that last turnover, this offense has been moving. Has been moving the ball, honestly. So first and 10, two receivers to the right, one to the left, H back to the right. They'll hand to Jenkins again and big hit. That 38, Jalen Brown hit him first along with a couple other Wolves. Jeremy Smith back in there, Xavier Robinson as well. Gain of about four. 
second and six. West Georgia fine with that clock running. Even though it's still third quarter with a whole other quarter of football to be played. Trips to the right, tight left, hands to Jenkins, left side. Good pressure by Eric Williams and company in the Wolves, but they'll push ahead for a gain of three, and it will be third down and up to the 40. Third down and three, and that probably will be the last play of the fourth of the third quarter. Yeah. Man, I was just thinking about it. I'm going to give him a shout-out. Shout-out to Eric Williams, man. Eric Williams and Malcolm Mercer, they play one of the most selfless positions on the field, and that's the nose tackle. They're taking on two to three guys every single play, and that's how they free up those linebackers. So, man, good job to Eric Williams and Malcolm Mercer. And like I said, that will be the last play of the third quarter. We'll talk more about our defense as we hopefully can get one more stop here on third down. Headed to the fourth, back after this on UWG Productions. Welcome to the pack. 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 Georgia's number one stop for everything Polaris and more. Adrenaline Power Sports is your locally owned power sports dealer, providing everything for work and play, from Polaris ATVs to side-by-sides. And from GEM electric low-speed vehicles to trailers. We've got you covered. Come visit our dependable service and parts departments, or stop and check out our wide selection of new and used inventory. Here at Adrenaline Power Sports, we strive to support our local community and provide excellent customer service to all. Come see us in Griffin or visit us online at AdrenalinePWR.com. We're proud sponsors of the University of West Georgia Athletics Department. Go Wolves! Welcome to the pack. 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 It's the fourth quarter. It was the fourth quarter without a little swag surf at University Stadium. Big third down, ball at the 40. Two receivers right, one to the left. Looking to throw is Arsenal and knocked away. Deflected away, great defense by Jabron Claude. And it'll be fourth down and West Al will have to punt it away. There goes that stout defense and Jabron Claude, man. Great job by that young man. So fourth down, they'll have to punt it away. Trey Sullivan to Wesley Kennedy. Snap handled. High spiral, and Kennedy will call for fair catch at the 25, and that's where the Wolves will set up shop. They'll put it at the 26, first and 10, West Georgia, 
Let's see if we can get a little drive going here, Ben, and put a nice bow on this game. Yes, definitely. If we, I, if we get a touchdown right here on this drive, I'm pretty sure we, we put I the like game in the chances. bag. I like our chances, yeah. I love it. I love our chances right now, but it makes me feel a lot more comfortable with a touchdown right here. Run some clock. Please run it. Take your time, Alt Wolves. LP, Keontae Skinner in the ball game. Steven Peterson in as well. Big Sam Regina. Trips out to the left, one to the right. Snap, Cam Brown tosses it out to Kennedy. Left side, and man, West Al got to him very quickly. Three or four Tigers out there. Gain of maybe two for Kennedy. Second and eight. We have not been able to run it. Since the first drive. We haven't really ran, we haven't really done anything good on offense since that first drive. Trips to the right, one to the left. Brown takes the snap, looking, throws out to Kennedy. Nice one-handed catch out there. Made a man miss at the line of scrimmage and did all that for a gain of maybe two to the 30-yard line and stepped out of bounds. Yeah, clock should still be running. Yeah, with a new Third clock, down, yeah. yeah. Third down. Trips now to the right side, one receiver to the left. It'll be third and six for the Wolves. West Georgia on third down tonight. One of 10. Brown takes the snap, looking, and now rolls to his right. Still rolling, looking, and Keontae Skinner ran out of bounds. Keontae Skinner Brown threw it, and I don't know if it would have been completed or not, but it looked like Keontae just ran out of bounds. Yeah, it was like he didn't. He couldn't catch his momentum. Yeah, like he was going too fast for his own good. Still would have been tough to sit, tough uh, to complete that, but man. Third down turns to fourth down. It's fourth and six, and Riley Mason will have to punt it away. Snap by Reagan, and they, oh, I don't know how they didn't block it, but Riley Mason just boomed one inside the 20, bounced at the 15. Javen West lost contain, but we do a great job. Marcus Gary heads up down there, Cade. <laughs> Cade just played a little, a little a get out of the way just then. Cade Marcus. and Kerry Stewart <laughs> split the defenders. That was smooth. Yes, it was. A little sidestep, Kade. Takes it right into our next media timeout. 13.20 to go here at University Stadium. 17 to six, Wolves lead the Tigers on University of West Georgia Productions. or hall are you with? I'm a freshman and I'm with University Suites. We're a -B -A -B -A -B -A. <laughs> I'm here with the Villages, the Kappa Alpha Order. The one and only all review. How has your experience been at uh, Battle of the Hall so far? It's been good, very loud, love the spirit. Listen, the energy is high and it is crazy out here. So if you haven't been, you got to make sure you come. It's been good. We just won that last game. Oh my gosh, it was so crazy. All right, and what event were you guys just doing just now? So we just did a tug of war. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it got a little heated and they were pulling and then the rope just snapped. It was it was crazy. Can you show us the evidence right there? Yeah. So. <laughs> <clears throat> um, this is half of the rope. You know, it was a lot of alpha male energy over there. Um, we didn't expect that. We were just running it back, but you know, we just too strong. We live. Welcome to the pack. 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 Uh, 
back on University of West Georgia production. It would be nice to actually turn the daggum mic on to start talking. My apologies, folks. <laughs> It's okay, man. It happens you know, to the best of us. I've done this. It's not like I've not done this before. You actually have to turn your mic on. Pre first game jitter, first home game jitters. Yeah, I don't know. They're looking to pass. Arsenal looking deep. Has a man. It is complete. What a catch. Is that that's number one again? Darius Knowles called it past midfield. That ball hung in the air forever. Kamai and Fagans was in coverage. Knowles made a better play. Yeah, he tracked that ball. Caught it. He tracked that ball really well, man. Yes, he did. Man. So that will go to the 46-yard line of West Georgia, and it's first and 10. They'll hand to Jenkins, left side to the 45, maybe a gain of one. Stopped by Keandra, or Abu Bangura. And Kamayan Fagans is coming up a little short. And Jordan Clark will come out on the field. Kamayan hobbling off the field. Hope he's okay. By the way, that was a 60-yard punt. 60? Ooh, that was a good punt. Great punt. We're going to put the play clock back at 12.48. And, yeah, that 60-yard uh, punt and a six-yard return. Arsenault coming back to the field of play. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. That's a big H-back. We haven't really seen him a lot tonight. Tyler Smith and Jenkins beside Arsenault. And Arsenault will keep for one of the first times tonight for him. And Tarver and Overstreet bring him down, but not before the damage is done and a first down, a gain of 11. Yeah, you say that big up back, he's one of their running backs as well, too, playing that up back position, so, or that full back position. He is pretty big, though, Matt. Yeah. So, first and 10, West Al. 17 to 6, your score. Don't go to sleep yet, Wolves. Arsenault looking to pass. Nobody's, nobody was <laughs> looking for a pass, everybody was blocking. I guess they thought it was a run play, and everybody was. So I don't know who got who gave the wrong play, but everybody was blocking. And Arsenault, the guys on the left, were it looked like they were going out for a pass, but he was staring out to the right side each time. West Al taking their time. No clock, clock not running. Obviously, though. Second and 10, man in motion. He comes behind the quarterback now. They're going to run the option play with him. Arsenault going to keep it and going to get hit. Ben Fortson and company made the stop for the Wolves. Gain of three or four, and it's third down. Haven't seen an option all game from um, from this West Out team, have we? No, we have not. It's the first one tonight. Ball at the 30-yard line. Be third and six. Two receivers left, one right, H back right. Now they bring the running back out of the backfield, send him out to the left. Arsenault looking, looking. He lost the ball. He just dropped the ball. Demetrius Lofton tried to pick it up, and he does. Demetrius Lofton scoops it up, and it's West Georgia football. Like like, uh, <laughs> like Carly said, this is a team, two teams that love to turn the ball over, and right now West Isle is coughing it up. Recovered by West Georgia, first down. I don't know if he just flat out dropped the ball or Demetrius actually hit it. Let's see. No, he, he just was trying to switch it back to his throwing hand, and he just dropped the ball. It took Demetrius oh, a while to get man. the ball, but I'm <laughs> glad he got it. <laughs> Demetrius looked like me probably trying to reach down and get the football. When you're a lineman, man, he was so happy to see that ball. I guess he didn't. He thought it was just so easy. He didn't did, have to you ever have to, did you ever recover a fumble in college? Uh, I had a fell on the fumble. Uh, I was too scared to pick it up. You're too scared. It's those knee braces, man, those knee braces. I'm telling you, it's a, di it's a different story. It's a different story. Uh, football weather is here, as you can see by our, by our friends in the stands. They are bundled up. 
I'm bundled up here in the booth. We hand to Rajay's Mosley, dragging Wimpy Tiger defenders across midfield to the 48. They get the 47-yard line. First down, West Georgia, gain of 11. Our first big run in quite some time. Yeah, that's that spark we need. And I think right now, if you're Coach Dean, just go ahead and keep giving that beast the ball, man. He He's hungry and he's looking really good right now. Let's go and give him the ball and keep it going. So first and 10, two receivers to the left, one to the right, H back to the right. 10-33 and counting, hand to Mosley. Across the 45, Rod Jay's up to the 41-yard line. Keep feeding that man. Yeah, feed him. He's hungry. Keep feeding him, like you said, Matt. Next, you're going to mark him at the 42-yard line. Gain of five, second and five. T. Cole in the ball game. See a switch at, on the O-line. Brandon Pippen making his first appearance tonight. That rack tackle, Sam Regina in there. David Bodden still in the ball game. Marvin James. Is that Brevin Jones at left tackle? Yes, sir. It is. Now hand to Rajay's Mosley. Oh, he made a man miss at the 40. Gets up field across the 35 to the 34-yard line. First down, West Georgia. Woof. Oh, he is looking good. Good. Great job by the O-line, but Rod Jace is just making people miss in that hole, and he's just getting to that second level. And the Great best job. part about Rod Jace coming alive is the clock is running. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> that was my very next thought in my brain. 9-25, 9-24 and counting. First and 10, West Georgia. Two receivers each side, too tight. We go with Wesley Kennedy in the backfield. Tigers with almost eight in the box. We fake it to Kennedy. Brown looking to roll, and he just throws it away. And the worst part about that is the exact opposite of what we just discussed. The clock stops. I have a feeling we're going to have illegal man downfield because Coach Gillian wanted one. Rolling on the field is the new quarterback legally grounded the ball. He was outside the pocket and through the pass past the line of scrimmage. Be second down. Now, why in the world would the far guy on the opposite side throw the flag for intentional grounding? GSC referees. Because because the because the coach said it. I thought we I thought honestly we had some guys downfield, but sometimes on our RPOs we, that happens. Yeah. Trust me, we run that those happens. a lot. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Here comes Wesley Kennedy. He's going to reverse field. Now cut back. Oh, and he did a lot and got nothing. Ty, uh, Trevon Stafford or Stanford, man, big hit right on Kennedy's left knee. Hope he's okay. It'll be third and long now. Javen West will check in for Trey Williams. Be third and ten. Two receivers to each side. Brown with Kennedy beside him. We're gonna have. Offsides, we're going to throw towards the end zone and just overshot Javen West, but we will have encroachment and offsides against West Al. Offsides, line up in the neutral zone at the snap, number 38 of the defense, five-yard penalty, still third down. So that was called on Michael Sharpley. It'd be third and ten. Or third and five, excuse me, after the penalty. Third and five, ball across the 30 to the 29-yard line. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. Kennedy beside Cam Brown. 8.22 to go here in quarter number four. We'll pitch it out to Kennedy, left side. Kennedy reverses his field, makes a cut at the 25 and may have got close to the first down marker. This guy has a first down. The guy up top does not, and they are going to give us a first down to the 24-yard line. Okay, I was about to say, because I saw that too. Two guys were going. Yeah. Up, 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 the the guy percent. up top was at the 25. The guy down here on our sideline was at the 24, first down, West Georgia. We'll take it. So this is that part of the game where you want the office line just to take over, Matt, honestly. Doing a good job of that here on this drive so far. Nice maneuvering by Wesley Kennedy. Trips to the left, tight right is Zach Obie. They got 
seven, eight guys in the box, and we'll throw it to LP across the 20 to the 19-yard line. Gain of five, second and five. Good read by Cam Brown there. Here comes Eshawn Mays in the game. Down in the red zone now. Really need a touchdown coming into this red God, zone. It'd be right great here. to have a touchdown here in the red zone. Under seven minutes to go now. Hand it to Wesley Kennedy. He tries to spin off a defender. Just can't do it across the 20 to the 19. And it will be third down. Third down, five to go. Trey Williams in, Eshawn Mays out. 6.30 to go here in the fourth quarter. Michael Tubbs. Out there at receiver. T. Cole down here by himself. Maybe one-on-one -on -one opportunity for T. Cole. Let's see. Like a fade ball situation for T. Cole. Bringing Trey Williams in motion. Brown going to keep it. Going to throw the slant to T. Cole. First down inside the five, down to the two, maybe the one. First down, West Georgia. Great route by, great slant route by T. Cole, man. He just he made, he just beat the guy off the line and got, got to the middle of the field. Deep slant route by T. Cole. Had him beat across the middle of the field. It's our all-conference receiver. Getting him inside and... What does he say? He's always open. Yeah, T. Cole always open. And I think we got away with a man downfield. <laughs> Looks like we had Brandon Pippen downfield. That's that RPO for you. First and goal at the two-yard line. Cam Brown going to fake it and run it in for a West Georgia touchdown. Nice answer for the Wolves. Great drive. Great drive by the Wolves, man. Way to put it in, and that seals the game right there, man. I hope so. 23-6 to six with 5.28 to go. Let's make this PAT right here. Had Sam Regina driving a man to the back of the end zone. I love it. <laughs> Haven't shouted out my O-line this game, man. Had to call somebody out. Great job by Sam. Uh, UWG Productions. Instant replay. So Pellegrino will kick it. Snap by Reagan. Hold by Hogan. Kick is up. It looks good because it is good. Timeout on the field. Wolves lead 24 to 6 over the Tigers of West Alabama in our final media timeout of the night. We'll be back right after this. financial advisor can do for you. Kevin, meet your father. Kevin. 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 Trusted advice for life. Kevin. How's your mom? Thank you. Life well planned. See what a Raymond James financial advisor can do for you.
And back at it, look at Wolfie in the stands, interacting with our great crowd tonight. If they've stuck around for this game, they can stick around for just about anything. Let's take a look at our upcoming schedule with West Georgia, Chawan next week. And then we've got North Greenville homecoming at Shorter on a Thursday night kickoff, Ben, the quick trip up Highway 27 and Delta State Senior Day here on November the 4th. End over end kick inside the five. That will be Darius Knowles and Festus Davies is there. Then who's this gonna drag and throw him back? That's Kel Bright. How about it? Yeah, Kel's been playing good all game, just the entire defense, but on that kickoff coverage, he played good, man. He came out and just gave, laid a hit on that, on that return, man. Was that number one? Yeah, uh, on the return, yes, Knowles. Yes. Great pursuit by the Wolves. 5.19 to go. Twenty-four to six. And three receivers to the right, one receiver to the left. Throw it out here to the right to Jenkins, and we'll th he'll throw a stiff arm, and we'll pursue well and make the stop. Jeremy Smith, Brian Rice make the stop for the Wolves. A loss of one, though, will be second and 11. Hey, Matt, um, I haven't seen Xavier Robinson this half. Is yeah, he on the sideline? Well, I know that he went out, or he was uh, – he had a leg injury of some okay. sort, but – he had had a thigh contusion against West Florida. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. And uh, they were going to kind of limit him. And luckily, we played well tonight. Trey Loveless from the backside, turn around. Oh, man. And speaking of Xavier Robinson, he just caught the football on the sideline. <laughs> He's standing right there by yeah, Coach we, we, Masters. He caught the football. We've been speaking a lot of things up. Carly spoke up a turnover. I spoke up Xavier Robinson. Yeah. So <laughs> And we got the cheerleaders making their rounds behind Kate and Carly doing some kind of weird, what's going on down there? I don't know. The most dangerous thing on the sidelines, those guys are the cheerleaders. That's where the sideline guy gets kicked in the back of the head. <laughs> they just started doing some kind of weird circle around Kate and Carly. Third down. Throwing it underneath to Darius Knowles. He caught the ball at the first down marker, but just like Trey Williams earlier, he came back. His momentum was pulling him back, and it's going to be fourth down, ball at the 25. And if you're West Allen, you kind of have to go for it. Yeah, and they have their backup quarterback in too, um, Tucker Nelson. So I wonder if they're just putting in, putting him in for the remainder of the game or if uh, Arsenal is hurting right now. So more, uh, we'll talk about it after this. Big fourth down play. Third, or uh, three receivers to the right, one to the left, changing the play. Jenkins moves to the right side now. Takes the snap, looking to the left, and completes to Darius Knowles and steps out of bounds. Jeremy Smith is there, for uh, Jordan Clark's there to assist him out. First down, West Alabama. They are throwing trash on the field at Truist Park. They are throwing trash on They're the field. They're throwing wow. trash on the field at Truist Park. It is three to nothing. They just called catcher's interference on Sean Murphy that brought home a run. The instant replay clearly showed there was no such interference, and the Braves fans are not happy. It's three to nothing. Long pass down the sideline looking for Knowles and Jordan Clark. If he would have turned his head about a half a second earlier, he might have been able to get his arms around as well and pick it off. Man, that's a great job. Great coverage by Jordan Clark. I wish he would have got that head around and caught that pick, but like he did, he locked him down, put that seatbelt on him. <laughs> that's the old ninja sword, the katana, putting the katana back oh, okay. in the, in the uh, whatever you call it. It looked like he put the seatbelt on. But let's see. I think it's the seatbelt for me. It could be. Uh, we'll see. It. We'll oh. see if they can't show it again. They'll throw it out of the backfield to Jenkins, and Jordan Clark makes another great play over there. Jordan Clark has had a great night tonight. Yeah, all our DBs have been playing really good, man. I, um, they, they definitely stepped up from, from the previous game, so I'm, I'm proud of uh, 
I'm really proud of how they played today. Clock continuing to run, third down, three minutes and five seconds to go. And they're taking their time, third and seven. Trips to the right, one receiver to the left. Snap, looking, stepping up to throw. And overshot his intended receiver is Chris Binion. By the way, this drive, uh, Tucker Nelton back in the ball game for Spencer Arsenault. So it will be fourth down. And what will West Al decide to do here? They got to go for it. 246 and counting. Fourth down, seven to go. Cross the middle and deflected away. Amos Don knocks it away on Chris Binion at the 40 yard line. Turnover on downs. West Georgia's defense holds strong again. How about the defense? They have played a well of a game tonight, Ben. Yeah, they have played an amazing game tonight. And, and just how they're celebrating, I, I will be doing the same thing, man. Great job by the UWG defense getting off the field. Somebody just won the 50-50 raffle. Okay. I thought they won the Jeep for a minute. When is uh, the Jeep going? Is it I homecoming? I think homecoming. I okay. think maybe homecoming. Cam Brown going to hand it off to Wesley Kennedy left side. Just stay in bounds, young man, and he'll be tackled three yards behind the line of scrimmage. And Brett Gillian will call a timeout. So it'll be second and 13, but a timeout. West Alabama, second charge timeout. So second down, actually lost four, Ben. So second and 14. <laughs> 24 to six, West Georgia leading West Alabama. Looking forward to being back here next week for Hall of Fame Saturday. Always a fun day to honor those going into the Hall of Fame against Chawan. And then we'll have the Crusaders of North Greenville. You've been to North Greenville? Yeah, I've been North, I've been to North Greenville, I think, a few times, actually. Yeah, I was about to say, I figured you probably had. Yeah. We've played them a time or two in your days. It's beautiful up there, though. It is. It is. They have a nice campus up there. And, um, what is it? Is it Tigerville? Yeah, Tigerville. Tigerville, South Carolina. As we yeah. pitch it off to Wesley Kennedy, right side, lost a yard. We didn't block a soul, and the timeout's called. A lot of miscommunication with our wide receivers. I know Coach Dean wants to put this game away, but our offense has just been playing inconsistent yeah. today, Matt. We stopped at. Uh, <laughs> we'll have to, to tell you this story some other time, but remind me to tell you about stopping on the way back last year from uh, Tigerville, South Carolina, to, in Traveler's Rest. South Carolina, just outside of Furman, and eating at the Waffle House there. Wow, okay. <laughs> there were two workers. And it's the best waffle, one of the best Waffle Houses I've ever had. Wow. Waffle House always hits, but. Waffle House always anybody hits. Anybody can tell you about Waffle House is Cade Perry, and that man can eat some <laughs> Waffle House. There is no greater Waffle House in all the land than the one on Maple Street. <laughs> yeah, the one on Maple Street. I am the, the mayor of that to. Waffle House. <laughs> He literally is. I've eaten there with him, and everybody knows him. Hand it off. Nope, we're faking it. Cam Brown going to throw, and it's incomplete. We had a receiver in the area. Javen West was there. Oh, no. They call it intentional grounding? Are they calling it intentional grounding? Javen West was three yards from the football. Well, regardless, we're going to have to punt, but it shouldn't be intentional grounding. Intentional grounding. What? Eight of the offense. Wow. 
It'll be loss of down at the spot of the foul. Fourth down. I, I would say the same thing if uh, Javen West wasn't, wasn't three there. yards away from the ball because he definitely – who will see the UWG Productions instant replay as Brown rolls to his right, looking. And can't see it from that angle, but regardless, we're going to have to punt. I mean, not a, not a earth-shattering penalty as Mason will punt it away. Booming kick, very high. Nalls will fair catch it at the 11, and we'll have to send our defense back out there to try to get one more stop. 2.13 to go, 24-6. to six. West Al will get a uh, week off. Looking at their schedule, they'll get a week off. And then they've got to go and have, or they'll host West Florida. Okay. Ooh. Yeah, for homecoming. Why? Wow. I wonder who made that decision. We'll see. <laughs> oh, and, sometimes, and sometimes it's just how the schedule ends up. Yeah, you know, it like definitely it. is. Sometimes you have to choose senior day, homecoming. How do you want to go out the right way? So and they play Valdosta, and then at shorter to end the season. They'll hand it off to Kilpatrick up the middle, gain of maybe two yards. A host of wolves. I guess I should say a pack of wolves make the stop. And there goes Xavier Robinson. Yeah, Xavier's back in there. Jalen Tarver also in on the stop. So two receivers to each side. New quarterback in the ball game. This is actually Jackson Abbott, the third string quarterback. Completion across the 25 to the 27 yard line to their receiver, Tyler Walker. And it's a first down, West Al, with 1.32 to go on the fourth quarter clock. Receivers to the left side, three of them, and one up top. Abbott will hand it off right side of Boo Bangura and Xavier Robinson. Xavier Robinson there first. That thigh bruise didn't seem to bother him too much there as he makes the stop on Michael... Uh, or excuse me, Hunter Kilpatrick. Yeah, his his instincts to just read the play is are amazing, and you really love when you have a guy like Xavier Robinson on your team. Two receivers to each side, second and twelve. Fifty-eight seconds, finally under a minute here. Abbott, three-step drop, stepping up in the pocket, delivering in a little high. Intended for number two, John Hilbert. Or was that six? I'm sorry. Six. That's six, uh, Chris Binion. And it's third down. 24 to six, your score. West Georgia are going to get out of here with a victory tonight. We'll be right back here, same time, same place. Same bat channel, as they say. <laughs> Six o'clock next week. Same formation. Abbott looking and will deliver off. This time out to number two. And Carson Yancey can't make the stop. But guess who does? Deontay Overstreet to John Hilbert. We haven't really called his name today, but he played. he's had a quiet game. But Deontay Overstreet is one of those guys where. Yeah, he took away an interception from yeah. Jabron Claude. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And Mal oh, man, big Malcolm's hurt. Oh. Time out for injury. hate to see Malcolm hurt. He's dealing with a turf toe no injury option. last time I spoke with him. So that's probably something he aggravated. I hear turf toe is the worst. Yes, man. it is. Oh, my God. What? It's probably the worst injury I've ever had. Really? Yes. What all have you done in your career? Uh, <laughs> I've had. <laughs> is that that's a long laundry list uh, of stuff? Offensive linemen are going to play through stuff. I, yeah, I, that's the only injury I could not play through. I played through torn meniscus, shoulder. I've never been able to play through turf toe. I, I've always had to sit out. Like Speaking a of the offensive line, the big uglies. There's a lot of big uglies right there. Those are big Austin beautifuls. Donaldson, Jalen. Shout Lee, out to all my boys, Sam man. Sam Regina. You know a lot of those guys. David Bodden. Yeah, those are my guys. Derek McFerrin. Um, <laughs> There's Brandon Bailey Pippen. Bailey Kennedy. Bryce, um, Brandon Pippen. 
<laughs> the conversations, you, if you knew the conversations we had down there, they're probably talking about what we're going to eat after the game. <laughs> Trust me, I know. I have a feeling whatever it will be, it will be a lot. <laughs> It'll be a lot, yes, trust me. But you'll be surprised. A lot of old linemen can't eat a lot. Like, Jalen Moore does not eat a lot. But Austin Donaldson? <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> I love you, Austin. <laughs> Fourth down and seven. He's going to get real mad at you. Trips to the right, one to the left. Fourth down, Abbott stepping up, throwing, and dropped. Darius Knowles drops it, and that'll do it. We'll take a knee and get out of here with a win. Hey, you can't win the next six without winning the first one. I'm telling you. One and no every week is the goal. And remember, as Patrick says, if you're here in the stands listening, don't go down yeah, to the field <laughs> until five minutes afterwards. We're in victory formation. It's nice to have jacket weather now, though. Yeah, it is. <laughs> but, I mean, I remember those days where this is shorts and T-shirt weather for a lot of big guys. But, yes, yeah, it's, it's definitely hoodie weather now for me. Great work tonight by everybody on our UWG Productions crew. I'm going to try to run down the list of everybody real quick as we wrap up. Wolves going to get the win 24-6. to And Cade Perry and Carly will have Coach Dean in just a minute. Our producer, the great producer, Shemiah Pittman. Uh, technical director, Alicia Lee. Jayla Cochran was our replay operator. Uh, Kennedy Torrance was our graphics and stats. Jordan AJ, Joy Partee, Dylan Wynn, Oliver Pleese, and Jada Little were on camera tonight. Mark Fleming was our audio operator. Ashley Sintha-Vongsa was our stadium audio operator. Lauren O'Brien was our content creator. Matt Cash is our broad, uh, production and broadcast engineer. And of course, the birthday man himself all week long, Mr. Corey Spates, our great director. Great work, everybody, and thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. So we'll wait for uh, we'll wait here for Cade and Carly to find Coach Dean. Let's see, I'm looking for him right now. Oh, yeah, they're, they're on the, the 32. There they are, yeah. yeah. I see you. Coach Dean dapping up everybody from West Al one last time. Who knows, this might be the last matchup with us going Division One. We might not get, get another matchup with, um, with West Al. And, we got Cade, there he is. He got Coach Dean, he's trying to get to an open camera. Right at the 45 yard line with Carly Pear. Here we go. All right, awesome. Um, so coach, thank goodness for defense. <laughs> no kidding, they played a great <laughs> ball game, held these guys to six points, that's awesome. Uh, we finally put a drive together there in the fourth quarter, but uh, you know, we just gotta play better offensively. Heck, heck of a job by our defense to keep us in the game, uh, all game. So how do you plan to tighten up that def or offense? Well, we just got to go back to work. You know, it's like I said at the half, it's, it's just a confidence thing. You know, we, we, we turn the ball over and we lose confidence in ourselves, and we just can't do that. We got to forget about it and go on and play the next play. And uh, that's just something that we got to continue to work on. And hopefully we'll get some positive things that will happen to us and get our confidence back. Awesome. Thank you so much. We'll see you next week. Right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Carly. Great work tonight on the sideline, calling out the turnovers, all kinds of stuff. Great work down there with Cade, as always. Ben, any final thoughts before we get out of here tonight? Uh, man, it was a great win for the Wolves coming off a loss in a bye week, so I know they had a lot on their minds. But um, I think that just, like Coach Dean said, it's time to just go back to the drawing board and build that confidence for the offense for next week. Well, I look forward to doing it again next week. Same time, same place, 6 o'clock next week here at University Stadium. Thank you all so much for being a part of our great broadcast. For Ben Walters, I'm Matt Skinner saying so long from University Stadium. Final score, Wolves 24, Tigers 6. We'll see you next week.